Coming up, it's the Apple Design Award winners 2019, the Game of the Year, and Micah Sargent. It's time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit iOS Today is brought to you by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at WordPress.com. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash twit. And by Aftershocks. Unbelievably comfortable open-ear headphones. Hear music and crystal clear phone calls like never before. Visit iOSToday.Aftershocks.com and use the code iOS Today for $50 off the tech bundle. You get me, man. You get me. <laughs> oh, iOS Today time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show where we cover the iPad, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, the Apple TV. Uh, Megan Maroney is still in Hawaii. In Kauai. But you know what? We're bringing him in all the way from Missouri. At no, we're sparing no expense. Micah Sargent <laughs> is here. Pay, we're paying the long distance fees. <laughs> Hi, Micah. Uh, hold on, Leo. You're on satellite, so it takes a minute for your response to get here. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hello, Leo. <laughs> all right. Don't you hate that when you're watching, t uh, you know, news channels and and you just know that everybody's going like, uh, 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 but they just <laughs> yes. and the correspondent's just standing there. Smiling. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, it. Micah? And then you. Just... Um, I think it's a great day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, anyway, we don't have that problem because we use modern technology. Wow, what a novel concept, Micah Sargent at Chihuahua dot coffee. Because <laughs> that's site you couldn't register coffee dot Chihuahua. That's true. They don't have the Chihuahua top level domain yet. Yet. But let's I think hope. they're going to do corgis first. It's just a thought, but maybe, maybe not. There's a heavy. Uh, I think in London they've got. You know, there's yeah. some money big, being thrown that way for sure. Yeah. You know. uh, and uh, no truth to the rumor that Micah moonlights as a World Cup soccer referee. <laughs> Actually, that shirt uh, is a beautiful shirt, and I am not mocking you. I love it. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's okay. I, I get a lot of flack for the shirt. For some reason, people are just drawn to those big stripes and uh, teasing me about it. So I was prepared. It's fine. So there's pin stripes, which are really thin stripes. What do you call thick stripes, big stripes? Uh, pl plank stripes. Plank stripes. Pin it's and good. plank. Yeah. It's a plank yeah. stripe. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. So today we thought we were thinking, Micah and I, we're putting our heads together thinking, and we said we should do, because they announced them a couple of weeks ago at WWDC, the Apple Design Award winners for 2019. Because these are, what is what are the criteria that Apple uses for the ADA winners? Well, they actually, you know, I'm going to pull up, I uh, put together an article over on iMore that uh, talks about the Apple Design oh, winners. And it explains, and you can see I'm vamping here. The word uh, design it, is kind of the giveaway, I guess. These are not just like great apps or apps you have to have. They have to they have to look good. They have to show off iOS. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. three criteria. It's design, so you've got a strong visual design, yeah. efficiency, ease of use. You've got technology, so apps that are fast and responsive. They take full advantage of Apple's latest devices and use Apple's newest technologies to do new and interesting things. And then innovation. Uh, of course, you know, you've got apps that sort of surprise and delight that nice. they offer platform differentiation. So it's design, technology, and innovation are the three criteria. Very nice. And uh, goodness knows there's a lot to choose from in the iOS world. Some of yes. these apps, uh, there's one app that we can't show. And I'm just going to show it real quickly. It's called Butterfly IQ. And the reason we can't show it is because it's not for you and me. It's for physicians <laughs> and sonogram for you. specialists, licensed medical professionals. Because, But it's an interesting product, which if I were a medical professional, I would buy. It's called Butterfly IQ. And uh, what it is is a is a sonogram ultrasound device that attaches directly to your phone or tablet, and and wow, it's uh, it's it's price 
it's price conscious because of the the technology that's used. I think they it's something along the lines of like ultrasound on a chip or something. I think is what they call it. And so that sort of miniaturization of ultrasound makes it much more cost effective, and therefore you can get a, an ultrasound probe that's well designed for uh, under two thousand right. dollars, which is kind of uh, bonkers. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, and it's portable because you can attach it to your phone, so you can use it in the field uh this is uh, apple this definitely deserves an award not because of design but just because of this is a really interesting use of you know you're you when you buy an ipad or an iphone you're buying a supercomputer uh, mm -hmm. why not take advantage of it so it's ultrasound on a chip so we'll mention butterfly network but we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna recommend it i guess we're not gonna demo it because i i don't have an i don't have a license Listen, if I could, I would. I'm that <laughs> I would do kind it. of person to be like, be I want to know, you know, I want to know. I'd there. use it on my dogs. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, Henry's <laughs> kidneys look great. Uh, Let's do another Mizzy. watermelon. What do you say? <laughs> What's inside Bring it this to the watermelon? Store before you buy melons, you never know oh, if they're fresh brilliant. or not. Brilliant. I love it. You can find that, uh, you know, as they say, I think it's good luck if you find an egg with two yolks. So you use that ultrasound device to find the two yolked egg. Yolks. Yeah. It's brilliant. Uh, I am going to show, so somebody wrote to us uh, last week and said, Leo, do more games as your app caps because I'm looking for more games. He mentioned uh, a couple of games that I've shown. One was Black, which I really loved, and then uh, the other was uh, the kind of the follow-up to Black from the same company. And he said, I like that. Games that, so I'm moving into a vertical mode because these games are vertical. Games that... Uh, are beautiful, sound great, and are kind of relaxing. They're not shoot 'em ups. And I have, you know, I have a less relaxing game, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to play. Can I start with my favorite one of them? I'm not going to do them in order. Oh, I love that. I love that. This is called Elo, E L O H. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not only sounds good. Can you hear my sound? Because it's important. Sounds really important on this one. I cannot currently. Here, we're turning it up. Ah, there we go. This is musical. So this has a flavor to it. Now, I should go back in time because I'm, I'm actually... Let me go back to... Spoilers. Yeah, well, only because uh, I want to show you, you know, maybe the easier levels. I'm... <laughs> this is... <laughs> I'm actually stuck on level four. So let me, let me go back to level one. <laughs> <laughs> Which I can, I think I can do. So the idea, it, by the way, this is another one of those great games where they don't tell you a thing. You just look oh. at it and you go, hmm, I don't know. Well, what what do I do? Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. That did something. Oh. Oh. Oh, cute. I fired it out. Let me turn the sound way up because you really, by the way, I'm rotated sideways in a weird way. Oh, crud. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> at least it lets you swipe up this time. Yeah. Thank goodness. Okay, so let me do that. There we go. So, hmm, that didn't that didn't do anything I I really wanted. Although it sounds good, it's got a Ooh. nice bass. You like that bass? What if I move this? Oh, you can move the heads. What if I move oh. the heads? Oh, now it's doing something. Oh, I like Isn't this. this. Great. It's I'd so be doing fun. like a little dance while I'm playing. It's so it's it's musical. It's beautiful. So now we get the idea. We're trying to. Get the balls to shoot out of here and end up in there. So I'm going to put... Oh, are those like little hints? Or are those just yeah, those can, are the only places you the where outlines. you can drop them? Yeah, you're the only places you can drop them. Oh, that oh was wrong. okay. Let's move that there. Oh. 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 Da, 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 da. And this thing kind of ratchets up. I love it. So if you're listening, they're a little te kind of tiki heads or maybe they're monkey heads. I'm not sure. I think I'd say look like monkeys. Uh, and you can move them around in this level. There are four of them. Uh, there's a ball shooter that shoots a ball out. But once it does, it bounces off things, you hope, and ends up in the receptacle. In this case, it doesn't. When it bounces off things, it uh, it makes a nice little bonking sound. I don't... Uh, let's try it. You got Experimentation is important. Oh, that's wrong. It's going up in the air. So clearly, this has to go up here. No... That what I'm loving about this is that it's not like super pressure. Yes. You know, there's not like, oh, you've got four seconds to make this happen or else you're out. And it sounds great and it's super satisfying when you get the heads in the right alignment. And then it's, and it also, you're making music. 
Yeah. So now we're at the level that I'm stuck at. <laughs> oh, because there's Cause a new Because we have a new thing. piece. Yeah. Um, Does that one stay where it is? Well, there's no what, movement? No. it's. Yeah, that one's stuck. So that means I need to do that. Oh, but that's... Um, oh, there you go. Oh, you did it. <laughs> I love the beat, don't you? So I think as this as this progresses, it's going to get more musical. Harder. Yeah, yeah, and add more music to it, which I think is fun. Well, look at you. You're already a pro. Oh, yeah. Figuring I'm basically uh, the expert on this thing. <laughs> look, you did it look, already. I did it. Well, that's the point. It's honestly, I think a kid could play this with great satisfaction, would love the music. But I think I'm always looking for, first of all, one price, three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be online to play it. So this is an airplane game. Uh, I think it's a game mom and dad will play on the airplane, or and 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 then when the kids get restless, say, "Here, play play you some Elo Elo." Let, Let the, the rhythm, rhythm fill your soul. Isn't that awesome? I like it. I, oh, a chilled out puzzle game to help you relax and find you. See, I am all about that. Honestly, that nice chilled out experience. I'm yeah. not not big into the overly it, it I, if i'm going to play a game i want it to just i don't want to get anxiety <laughs> no. playing it yeah i know exactly what you mean uh, i do have an anxiety game coming up next but yeah. <laughs> let's let's but, why don't you do one here you're a writer all right we gave you the productivity yeah. apps yeah well I'm, yes productivity sort of creativity kind of okay. uh, i'm going to start with flow and then this leo is where you say the way that the word is supposed to actually be pronounced. Isn't it like moleskine or so something? So they say, and I've asked them, mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that notebook that's made uh, in... Uh, I th I, it's not made where you think it's made. It's based on a notebook that was uh, from Shakespeare and Company in Paris. And then the company started making it and they gave everybody the impression they were Italian. So I always say moleskine, but some people say moleskin. Mm -hmm. Or moleskine, mm -hmm. and then if you ask them, they say it's pronounced however you want to pronounce oh, it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, okay. I don't really love that. I hate it whenever they do that. Um, but this app is pretty neat. So it's called Flow, and uh, it is free to download, and then you can start out with a free trial, and then after that, it's actually a subscription app. So free for 14 oh. days. And then after that, it's subscription. Now I have to say, I do find that odd for an app that is essentially a notebook um, or a, a sketchbook because there are many sketchbooks on the app store and those are typically uh, pay, pay once, have forever. Uh, so... The subscription thing is kind of odd to me. Um, I've seen more and more uh, companies do that, and I think it really is just there. You know, it's not enough to you know say here's five dollars exactly and have them develop it. Now this one looks like I'm going to want to use my pencil on. This yeah, thing. definitely use your Apple pencil uh, if you've got an Apple pencil too. Uh, then you're rocking even harder because there are some gestures for the Apple Pencil 2 that are not available with the uh, uh, first Apple you're Pencil. You're going to have to walk me through it. First of all, this yeah, is, so a, this is a, apparently a, I can't this draw is a my page pencil with a right sketch now. on it. Uh, okay. So go ahead to the top right corner of the screen there where you see the, the top right. Um, oh, right, as in the right. Yeah, top right. Okay. <laughs> and then choose preferences. It is pretty. And then choose gestures. So it you is can very see, pretty. you can see, oh, and play sound effects, restore tools. Okay, and gestures. Now and then, look at those different choices for Apple Pencil. When, um, when the, go ahead. you can choose the action for double tap. So that's one thing the pencil does. The system default switch to eraser, which is probably what I'm going to do. Finger settings. When the Apple Pencil, you could choose how your finger does. And does your finger draw? Or, you know, I'd like it to pan, right? How do you use yes. it? Pan yeah, so right like. now uh, I have it set. So when using Apple Pencil to draw, you can choose how your finger interacts. I like to erase with my uh, finger, finger personally. Okay. And then, but there's one where when you are holding a finger on the screen, yeah, yeah. then I use my Apple Pencil to pan. That's uh, what I like to do that there. That makes sense. And yeah, then single, one, tingle, one tinger fap. 
I mean, one, <laughs> one finger, finger tap. tap I have set for nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, two, two finger, finger tap, tap I have for undo and okay. three finger tap is redo. Redo. That's Ooh, how I have mine. Set. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Okay. So I've done that. And now you can uh, just sort of uh, swipe, you, yep, back. swipe back in. Actually, now let me down, get a new. Now I can get a new uh, image. Yes, there we go. Exactly. Blank screen. But, so, oh, you one know thing what? My, I, my pencil's probably not dead? charged. It's what, and now because everything's upside down, I have to turn this around. <laughs> <laughs> pencil, I was about to say this should be working, but yeah, I guess if yeah. it's dead, that's or I'm, not dead or unpaired, probably. Oh, oh no, okay. it's dead. It's dead. oh, it's very dead. So we'll charge it as fast as I can. Meanwhile, I'll use the finger. Yeah, go ahead and use your finger. So, uh, you know, you've got different drawing tools. Remember, you have it set up to erase while you use Apple Pencil. So <laughs> you probably have to go back to into go your preferences. Into settings. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I want my finger to draw. Now we're going to draw. Now, we're, now we're, we're back in there. Okay. So we have a variety of tools. It looks like a uh, kind of a calligraphy uh, pen. Yeah. Yeah, a uh, fountain a nice pen. Nice chip marker. Yeah, little come some fine points. This is nice. Fine point markers and then like uh, the pencils actually do have a very uh, pencil feel. This the one of the other things that I find kind of sad about this is um, just using your finger, you don't get. Uh, I mean, it makes sense, you, with, especially with the calligraphy tool. You don't get a lot of the sort of um, bending and nice changes that you can get whenever you use the Apple Pencil for tilting and things like that. It makes a little bit of sense, but usually they'll fake it uh, to give you the use of your finger to create calligraphy right. um, features. But This is really yeah, designed it, for the pen. Exactly. Yeah. And you'll see, you know, a lot of the promotional images show folks who are architects and, um, you know, look booked kind of people who are doing these sketches and, right. and making the art. Now, one of the things that I love Leo on the left side, tap on the, one of those rectangles of color. Yeah. These, these are complementary oh, colors. I guess maybe that's a uh, tap on the top left side of that, where you can see the mark. Yes. Oh. They name every color. Blue I know bonnet. that's a silly thing, but no. every color has a name. I'm in Veronica. I'm electric pink. I'm lust. I'm vivid tang jello. I'm orange yellow. I'm dandelion. That is so cute. Let's go with I a little green that. lizard. What do you say? Oh, the little green the little lizard. Green li oh, I have to use, uh, I forgot, tap and hold. I oh, can't remember now what I'm doing. Oh, there. Left hand. Now, how did it? It did. I don't you know. know. Don't even that ask. Was weird. That was kind of scary. See if my pencil's working now. Yeah, it is. There so, we go. Um, you might want to zoom out a little bit. I think you're zoomed in. Oh, on the, so I can also pinch and. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. you can choose different papers. I noticed we've got dots for people yeah, like the bullet people journal. People love the dot grid. Yeah. That's a Megan dot grid, and then uh, lines if you're taking notes. Um, different background colors. That's nice. I like I like kind of a little sepia, the yellow, or I don't like white. Yeah, white. I think I have mine. I think mine have mine on the third one, the the like light blue color. That's another. But good the choice. sepia yeah. light blue yeah. look nice. Yeah. Don't yeah. like that plain pure white. Um, but you you can add uh, on the the right bottom side. You can see that you can add new color tools. So if you like to write with the pencil or the marker or something like that, you hit that plus button and it gives you another option to have, again, you know, the same tool, but maybe with a different color or ah. slightly different settings. So, so you can add yeah, you multiple with different colors. Mm -hmm. So this becomes not only a tool setting, but a really a palette setter for a limited exactly. size palette. And then you can imagine the like you would in real life, you know, you've got your what is it? Copic uh, markers, right? And you right. grab. You don't have to make. You know, there aren't any settings for for physical Copic markers. You just pick one up and start with it. So it kind of gives nice. that same feel. You can even say, yeah. you know, I want the same marker, but I want the finest possible point. I'm going to add that to my tool set, so that you have. That's really nice. So you could change the point, the color. That's and I think really the way nice. that the color system works in this is particularly. Uh, amazing. It not just, you know, I uh, talked to just a second ago about how I love the fact that they've named all these different colors, but more importantly, the way that they are organized and the way you can change the shade of the color yeah. as you're going through. And Leo, if you uh, kind of grab, go back into the color um, area, 
and then kind of grab and swipe. You can see how it says, what is a new car? Yeah, I'm on new uh, car right left now. left and right. Swipe left and oh, right. Oh, it's not merely new car. It's darker and brighter. It's not working. It should let you. Just do like a single swipe maybe. Oh, there we go. Iris. You, you can, I think you can use the marker tools or just like swipe oh, on the interesting. screen. interesting. Interdimensional yeah. blue. So within that shade, you can even see, oh, wow, look at that. And kind that's, colors that that's different well luminance. That. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, they're complementary. So. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. uh, there, yeah, it's, it's very, very good. I think at the organization and sort of that feel that you get when you are physically, uh, using these tools to, to create something. So it makes sense why this received a, uh, a, an Apple design award for sure. And this is elderberry. elderberry. You knock them off the platform. <laughs> Let me just see if the double tap. Oh yeah, ah, very hey. handy. So if you have a if you have an Apple Pencil, this is really a a, a really nice uh, choice. Uh, what does that button do? Oh, that eliminates the That's, interface, so you can just have a yep. nice clean interface. You got undo and, and redo the little uh, <laughs> what is that called? Life preserver tool lets you see the Help. how to do yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. All the different stuff there. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so this it's is pretty. It's not Procreate, uh, it, you know, on the art side, and it's not Good Notes uh, on or you know Notability on the Taking Notes side. But for somebody who you know what it is, it's much like a Moleskine notebook. It's kind exactly. of yeah, very kind of simple, straightforward. It is quite. It is quite beautiful. Now, uh, it's not expensive. Two dollars a month, or twelve dollars a year, which makes it a dollar a month. That's not horribly yeah. expensive. Twelve dollars a year is not bad at all, yeah. uh, and it makes sense. You know, if if we continue to see updates and improvements to right. this app right. and and you know the services that are offered there, then sure, twelve bucks a month uh, or twelve bucks a year, I could totally do that. And again, th this it's interesting the the digital studio for Moleskine or Moleskine uh, or Moleskine, whatever you say, it's the new GIF <laughs> GIF. Um, <laughs> It gives you, they, they've got a, like three or four different apps that they work on regularly and they really focus in and try to produce things that artists who would use, artists or, or, or note takers or whomever who would use their physical products get that same experience from this uh, digital product. So it's clear that, you know, a lot of thought and a lot of, of care went into the design of it. And like I said, those... The way that the colors are are organized and the way that you can sort of choose your tools in that way, I think, are what really sell this for me in terms of its, uh, you know, why it why it deserved and got that award for sure. Now, I should mention that the iOS 13 public beta came out yesterday. You've been using the developer edition for some time. I had not. I, of course, being who I am, immediately downloaded it. And my next pick my next apple design award winner does not work with ios 13 <laughs> so i can launch it and i'll show you and I've, i don't think really i need to show you because i think everybody knows asphalt 9 and a, what a great racing game oh, the asphalt gotcha. series is this is uh, from france of course you get a variety of real cars it's great for racing but as you can see do not if you want to play it do not get ios 13 because it crashes out i'm sure they'll update it in fact the first thing that happened when i switched to ios 13 is i got more than 100 apps that wanted to be updated. So I suspect apps are already being updated. But just honorable mention, Asphalt 9, if you like driving games, it's a great one. I, I saw somebody tweet today uh, saying, this is my childhood dream come true. He's at an airport. He's got his iPad, you know, leaning against his luggage, and he's got a game controller, and he's racing Asphalt on a beautiful 12.9-inch iPad Pro. That is a pretty great experience. So if you like racing games... It, Highly recommend it. I'm going to show another game, though. This is another Apple Design Award winner called Ordia. And it's very similar in a way. I think Apple has a certain um, prejudice <laughs> for games. I'll put it this way. Let's see if it'll rotate. No, it won't. It, has to, it wants to be in portrait, and it wants to be in portrait this way. Apple has a certain prejudice for games that sound good, are aesthetically simple, and I have a, I, I actually confess I have a similar prejudice. One of the things I don't like about games like Asphalt 9, which is essentially a port from a console game, is that it's got console-style controls. I like games that are designed uh, for the 
pad. And this is very, very touch focused. We are, you are in this game, a little eyeball, as you can see here. And your goal is to stay away from the evil pink mushrooms in this amoebic <laughs> fluid that you're in. And you can kind of make oh, it. Oh, so those are like latching. You can hop. Zones. Yeah, but if you miss, now this is the one where I have a lot of trouble because you can't just. Oh, are those spikes back Those too? spikes. You can't really get past those spikes. So I think you have to do a carom. Let's see if I can. No. Ooh. Maybe I go. Oh, maybe I have to go up the side. I don't know how to do this one. It's, I've been stuck on this for some time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you, you get the... Oh, no. oh, little amoeba got... Now, again, relaxing because Owie. you can infinitely restart. You're not going to suffer as a result of these. But I just... For the life of me. So it's it's fun. And I think I presume there's going to be... If I can ever get past this level. <laughs> though, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Mm. Oh, I made it. Oh, okay. you did it. Whew. I presume that in time, uh, additional friends will show up. Whoa. Oh, no. All the way back down. So if you played Doodle Jump, remember Doodle Jump in the old, in yes. the day, back in the I day? I still have that one. This is a Doodle Jumpy, but it's a little prettier, a little more. Uh, oh. oh. But that same. More physics involved. Yeah, in but the one. same frustration, which is that you have to go all the way back. All the way back to the beginning. Is there not a checkpoint well, somewhere? Well, maybe there Come is on. if I would get to it. I guess it. you get far enough. <laughs> Ooh, oh, man. Saved by the bell on that one. Oof, that so one's hard, dude. It's hard. You got to overshoot it. Oh. oh. So maybe this is not a non frustrating game. Yeah, this one I could see just chucking that iPad across. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game to play on your, oh, your extra iPad. There you go. On your <laughs> your night iPad. On your one rubber encased iPad for the toddlers. <laughs> Can I do it? Your beach house iPad. I'm going to stretch it as far as I can. Ooh, there we go. That. So that's what I need to do. I can stretch farther. I can. Oh, I, that's a, so I've learned a new skill, which is stretch the hell out of it. All right. Maybe we can make some. What's that yellow thing over there on the left? Don't even say. That? Yeah. Should I try to pick it up? What is that? It's yeah. another one. It's another one. It's my friend. He's watching. He's watching. No, seriously. He is. Really? Yeah. Oh, he's just what's that he way. watching for? Just well, maybe if I go down and pick doing? him up, let's go. Let's go visit him. Whoa! Oh, you you. Did I got something. him. I got a little extra pointage. So uh -huh. now apparently, if you catch these guys on the way, oh, this is. So you see how these? Yeah, you see what precarious. he's trying? You see what he's doing to me? Is that your friend or is that your enemy? Exactly. Well, I guess I could go back. Yeah, get him that way. Nice. So this what is, happens if you get 10, I wonder? You probably, with 10, you get egg roll. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez, you're asking all the hard questions. <laughs> what happens if you get 10? It's a game. Something good. <laughs> oh, did you like that? Ooh, that I hopped. Nice. Look at that. I hopped over. Ooh, that okay. one's got a bubble around it. Which, I, don't that, know. I think I'm going to live there. Yeah. Ooh. So that's a save point, right? I would guess oh, that's... Oh, good. You did it. Now yeah. I got to... Catch this guy as he's going back and forth. And then... Oh, you got another friend up there. I got a friend up there, but I also have a little mold spore. Oh! You did it. Oh, crud. Oh, fooey. <laughs> okay. Enough. You get the idea. This is actually nice. This is a fun game. I like it. Uh, I can't remember the price, but I'm sure we have it written somewhere in there. It's you called, do. It's called, it's called Ordia. And it's I'm going to... How much? Three ninety nine. Yeah. And I'm going to guess that <gasps> Ordia, isn't it? I mean, look how amazing it gets. So I'm going to guess that Ordia is primordial minus the P I I, think you're right. and then the L, right? Ordia, pri, <laughs> minus, minus the prim, letters that aren't there. Minus the <laughs> prim and the L. It's primordial. It's Ordia. I, I like this. It's fun. You know, this is, games are it's very pretty. personal. And some people will really like this kind of game. It's very doodle jumpy. Ordia, and it is, as all of these are, an Apple Design Award winner. Micah, to you, next, Beautiful. off to you. Next to off you. Off to me. You're next. Uh, this is, I. how did I not know about this? So I've had Pixelmator for a long time on uh, my iOS devices as a way to do, you know, before there were options that were a little more Photoshoppy. Uh, Pixelmator has always kind of been that for me. And so I've used Pixelmator for ages, but 
Pixelmator has an app called Pixelmator Photos that is kind of the Apple um, showcase of when when Apple says a billion times over and over and over again in you know keynotes and in uh, WWDC uh, workshops about machine learning. This app is a showcase of machine learning that I love because, you know, not all of us are good at knowing, okay, I need to drop the levels on this image. Right. I need to uh, make sure that the, the highlights are set to here and that we've got great dark values and I've got to change the color, temp, all that kind of stuff. Um, with the simple press of a button, which is in the top right corner of the screen the first one there it says ml it will that's the best analyze your photo better than any of the other ones i chose that's nice. yes it will analyze your photo and make adjustments to it that you can then see right. uh in in each of the different sections there on the right side if the ml is lit up gold that means that machine learning has activated for those and they have made adjustments then you can go farther if you want, or further, if you want to, you can add fade, you can add noise, you can change those values that the machine learning set. And here's the thing: it's not like uh, just a simple auto button where it looks at the color or the brightness value and then adjusts for that. This actually looks at what the photo is, looks at the subject of the photo. Um, uses the entire machine learning. I can't think of what those are called. What is it? Library database. Um, They've, you know, they've, they've uh. stuck. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Megan does not like scary. it when I work with that one. <laughs> uh, they stuck it full of of stuff so that it learns, you know, what a good portrait looks like, what a good, um, what a good landscape looks like, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, I think, what makes this app stand out. Um, why does it keep... Is that the same photo? I shouldn't over keep tra again? tapping it. I'm impatient. I'm scared. Yeah, if I... I don't know what's going oh, no. on. Finally, there okay. <laughs> it's because wow. it was in the cloud, not uh, local on the iPad, and so it had to, had to load it. So let's try. Let's just see. This is a picture of my wife uh, in... Um, I'm trying to remember where we are. Somewhere. I, I, Spain, I think. And then... Yeah, see, I'm not crazy about That's that. That's not good. No. What's happened there? Yeah. So, uh, but the nice thing is, you just you just open up the adjustments after it does the adjustments, and you can Why say, you know, I that? think that was. Maybe that's better. No, that's not. <laughs> What's happened? This photo is that one's machine that one's learning not. did not help this photo. But that's now, all right. There are plenty of other already? choices. In fact, these filters. Yeah, I had modified it a little bit already. So maybe that was what was confusing it. But uh, I have to say. If you are a Lightroom fan or a professional and you want to uh, put something on your iPad that isn't Adobe Creative Cloud, is not a subscription, Pixelmator mm -hmm. Photo does everything you can do with Lightroom. It is stunning. It's only $4.99. Yeah. It's which is uh, wild to me. Now, I think that's a temporary price because they just introduced oh, it. Oh, that's true. Uh, that's true. Because it, it should be 50 bucks. It's really a must-have. I mean, must it's got every, it, it does everything, yeah. and uh, I, I have genuinely found that you know when I'm going, I don't know what I should do with this photo, but I know it needs improvements. Those machine learning options are very helpful for me as a jumping off point. Right. Uh, you can also edit uh, as we're seeing, as we're showing here, raw editing. That's on huge the for me because I shoot raw, iPad. and I really yes. want raw, and the ability to do that is fantastic. Uh, it, I, I, this is so deep. There's so much in this. Uh, uh, I just highly recommend it. Um, they just the, really done a nice job. The machine learning algorithm has been trained with more than 20 million professional wow. photos. Wow. Uh, so again, you know, when I was talking before, it's not just, it's not just, you know, a, a small library of photos that are standard. It's, portraiture it's you know photos of pets it's photos of landscapes it goes on and on and on and that's what i really like about this the export features are great too you know you don't just have to export in in one way you can uh, save a copy of it you can modify that original photo that's in your library or tapping export lets you make some uh, changes on the formats that you want to use so if you I say, like, go get this app right now before yeah. the price goes up. Yeah. It's four ninety nine right Spectacular. now. Spectacular. 
And if you find yourself being one of those folks like me who says, I know that this photo could be improved, but I'm not sure exactly how to do it, then get Pixelmator Photo, hit that ML button and start there. And not only are you going to be able to, in most cases at least, not with that photo of Lisa there for some reason, <laughs> but um, in most cases you can count on that as a jumping off point. Right. And then you kind of start to learn too as you're seeing how it's making adjustments to tools um, that it is doing a good job. Oh, and I didn't mention this. Uh, it was just shown in that video that we have playing the remove stuff I don't want in the photo tool is pretty, it's pretty wild. I kind of, you know, put it to the test with some different things just to see what it could and couldn't do. And I was impressed with it outperforming Photoshop in some ways. Absolutely. At, at, at being able to remove junk I don't want in a photo to have uh, the good stuff that I do want in a photo. Well, so that's pixel made photo. I'll give you a great example. And I showed this when we uh, first. Uh, when it first came out, because I was so excited uh, by this. Let me see if I can find um, this. See, I, unfortunately, I un undoed it, undoed it. But I, <laughs> but I was able to, and I'll, I'll do it again. I was able to, with the uh, heel brush, take out this entire fence and make it just lush greenery. And wow. by itself, notice how smart it is. I'm just painting Yeah, you're this. not having to sort of like rearrange yeah. or say, oh, And you know what? Undo, I don't like this parking again. lot back here. Uh, let's pretend there was no parking lot at the hotel. We'll just <laughs> look at that. Uh, this is, you're absolutely right, in many ways superior. Now, what I like about uh, Pixelmator Photo to me is that it gives a beginner some very powerful tools like that machine learning and this healing brush. But as you get more advanced, you'll find that there is a lot more that you can do mm -hmm. with it. And uh, and in fact, I would say it gives a pro all the controls, including channels and levels uh, yeah. that you really would want. So honestly, I believe like this is this is truly an amazing uh, app. And for five dollars, I just don't understand. Yeah, uh, you get know, this. You yeah, just you'll you'll be glad you have it even ten years from now. And, uh, Agreed. Yeah. And I have to say, iOS 13 is going to be a boon to photography because now you'll be able to import directly into Lightroom and so forth. But but for a lot of people just using Apple Photos and Pixelmator Photo, Apple Photos will be your catalog. Pixelmator Photo will be your editing tool. That's mm -hmm. going to give you, I would say, 99% of what a professional tool like Lightroom will do. I, I feel like this, I this is the future. This is just remarkable. And and so much, in my opinion, easier to unsurface uh, yeah. all of the tools that you need versus Lightroom, where things can kind of be tucked away and confusing. All right, here's another one that's best with headphones. So put your headphones on as <laughs> as you watch. And also, I should mention uh, this is a Mac app as well. So there's an app, uh, iPad version and a Mac version. <clears throat> this is called what is it? The gardens. Uh, the gardens between. Between. There you go. And this is more of an adventure kind of. This is less of a, one of those abstract games. We're kind of in a story. Storytelling here. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so actually, I haven't played this yet. So I, because I thought it wasn't on the iPad, and you told me this morning, yeah, it's on the iPad. So let's play. Let's play the first few uh, minutes together. We've got a backyard, a treehouse. A boy and a girl in the treehouse. <coughs> it's kind of an urban setting. A train keeps going by. They're, they seem sad. Can I tap them? No. That's why they're sad. Oh, the lightning came. So um, I could skip this. This is a cutscene. But let's watch it. You and I. Together. Together we'll watch We'll watch. Oh, there's an orb. <laughs> Something's happening. The orb has transported them and their treehouse to the gardens between. To the gardens in the world between light and dark, day and night. So now... Um, okay, this is beautiful. Yeah. Sounds good, too. This way. Yeah, there's, oh, they're, they're stranded now on a beach. Oh, here's a little thing that says swipe that way. Uh, Only one oh, survivor. Oh, look at that. I can oh I can reversing go time backwards something. and forwards in time. There's a bathroom. Oh, I think we're going to be building. <laughs> <laughs> no, the right there in a box. There's a box the with a bathroom. What is going on? 
What? There's the orb. It's back, baby. Apparently I can move <laughs> the orb anywhere I want. What the heck is going on? Hmm. So yeah. Okay, I gotta I gotta admit, I would love a little direction here. Oh no direction. Oop. It's a billiard ball. What is that? Okay, a ball has bounced in there. About to catch Bocce it. Bocce ball. Bocce ball. There's <laughs> Ar Arena's room in a box. It's falling out. Everything's falling out. So were they out. about to move, maybe? And they didn't want to move? So now they're... Don't project your weird fantasies. <laughs> lounge. What do you mean? <laughs> lounge, lounge. The lounge room and the bathroom okay. are all packed up. It's all in a box. Yeah, maybe... And a dolly. I guess I have to swipe a lot to get them that to go into the future. That seems odd. Can you just, like, hold? Swipe and hold? Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. See, I, oh, I need God. your help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tap. Tap. They found the, uh, oops, now they put it back. The orb thingy. They found the orb. Uh, let's go forward. Now we're going to go with the orb. Oh, they've, they're going to find the secret monument to, uh, tuning forks. And that's to Monument Valley. To Monument Valley. Maybe this, is this like it? I don't know. She's now going to put, let's tap, put the, put the orb, boom. They both did it. Now they've created wow. a ref, a rift in the uh, fabric of the universe. They're pretty smart. They're good. These kids, they're no good. No one to do with these here orbs. These, these kids today. Oh, there's Ariana's room. So let's just... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now what did I do? So I just put Ariana's room in the sky. In space. <laughs> Probably not the effect you wanted. Um, now they're on the dock. They've made a little houseboat out of their treehouse. Oh, a lot of time something passed. else we should tap. Oh, she's got the uh, tap it. <gasps> okay, <clears throat> so it's a puzzle game, as you can. Oh, she should go back. She should go. Okay, he should tap that. Oh, now we're getting to the puzzly part. And then she needs to go back get and the get the orb. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got that part. Now what? Can you swipe back? Now to like send them back in time. Oh, you're right. She now it's in. Oh, she's got it in her lantern. Oh, and they, special even another orb, spare one. Orb. This is spare orb, and now she could put it here probably. What yeah, happens? And send the bathroom to space next. <laughs> the bathroom's gonna go to space. Oh, she's completing. Ah. ah now here's another light. Ooh, there's a dark orb of. Uh oh, uh, dark orb. Yeah. Maybe the lounge room will be next, or the kit. Oh. I would go for the kitchen. It's a uh, it's underwater. Yeah, it's starting to sink a little oh, bit. Oh, whoops! And you jump. You she did. She jumped. It. She turned <gasps> night into day. And now, so I bet you got to have them ring that bell first to close that <laughs> dark orb. You've played <laughs> this before, have you? I promise I have not. All right. Okay. Ring the chime. I just want to send my kitchen to space. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> you are so smart. I just want to send my. Oops. Nope, 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 nope. I wonder why only the boy can ring the Only the boy the, can ring the bell. It's a I metaphor. I read that in a prophecy somewhere. Yeah. It's the prophecy. And the boy shall ring the bell, and he and she shall walk through the portal and place the lantern on the giant tuning fork. She needs the orb first. She oh, gotta go crap. I got it. Anyway, I've had enough. Have you? <laughs> Don't ring the bell, boy. <laughs> Jump backwards, I just boy. Know, I just have to know what goes to space next. That's all. Oh, all right. About. All right. We'll we'll stop when we send another thing to space. <laughs> okay. Now we go up the hill. Yeah, da da. Jack and she Jill. Has an Alvin and the chip. Should I ring Jack the bell? Alvin. She's waiting. No, no, don't no, do it. don't she ring might, the bell. Whatever you do. It might okay. suck up the orb. So this will put the kitchen in the space. <laughs> Let's hope. Or that moving truck over there. <laughs> oh, there's a left. moving truck. This is some uh, deep Freudian. Yeah, you're. We're yeah, you're right. Subconscious. I'm sending it playing. up to space, and that is be. now. Oh, the front door. The front door. With so I guess we're there. building her house. Now it's going down the tubes. It's wow. This is as impenetrable as 2001. A space odyssey. <laughs> I don't. Maybe it's returning everything home that got lost. Yeah, in this mid yeah. 
But look, it looks like they were about to leave, so I don't understand. No, it's anyway. Is this that a is, constellation? This is uh, one of those things. <laughs> As Burke says, it's a metaphor for creation. Duh. Duh. Duh, Burke. What? <laughs> Come on. Oh, wow. You know, sometimes you have a house and it's a boat and it takes you to your next Wait sprinkler island. Sprinkler. Welcome to Sprinkler, to sprinkler island. island. The boat. The boat. All right. Enough. I'm closing this. That's it. <laughs> Get, the gardens oh, between. Uh, if this is not my kind of game, I could see why oh, I won no. a design award. It's available everywhere. Xbox, Steam, Mac. Uh, maybe it'd be better on the Mac. I don't know. PlayStation. But uh, now on the iPad as well. If it come, came with like a companion book or something where I could understand a little bit no, of like no, you what don't in the need world's to going on. It. It's just oh, I see. I just have yeah. to let it happen. Some people, some people like solving mysteries. Some people like just floating around. <laughs> some people like sending their bedrooms back to <laughs> back to the real world. Do you have another one? I think I have a ton of games. Yeah, you've got more games to tell me about. All right. um, you got there are no. Okay, this no one I game. can't do either because I am not a hoop, <laughs> I'm not a hoop master. It's called oh. Home Court. Track your shots with iPad. Now, <clears throat> my personal this is quite a game. This is neat. This is this yeah. isn't a game. No, my personal trainer uh, is a rowing coach, and there there is a great app where you can record video of somebody, slow it down, annotate it, show them their errors, and so forth. I think that's exactly what this is. Uh, but having to do with hoops in some way, so I guess I'll just sign in with Google, and yeah. and and we'll we'll find out. Okay, because yeah. uh, it's it's pretty neat. <laughs> I mean, it's it's also using machine learning, AI, and all that oh, you jazz know about to help you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This uh, this helps you basically. You get to you play basketball in front of this app, and you do different like training drills and things like that, and it helps you improve right. your game. So if I wanted to be good at basketball, there's a shooting workout. There's like the mic and drill around the key, around the, all these drills that you would do. There's ball handling drills. So this would be great for a teenager uh, or a parent who wants to help a teenager get better at basketball or just anybody who loves basketball. Uh, this I think the set, this looks fantastic. Uh, I know nothing about hoops particularly. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I you know, stir myself. Um, but if, but it, if if you do, this would be a lot of fun, and it you can, can handle you, more than one kid. You could do a whole team with this clearly, and uh, so that's that's kind of neat. You select a roster, and uh, that is that is called home court. <clears throat> and then I think I'll show one more, which we've shown before. Actually, we I think this was an app cap some time ago. This must have come out early in the year. It's called Thumper. Oh yeah, I liked this one. This when was, I was fun. watching the Apple Design Awards. Yeah, yeah. this is fun. It's hard. Uh, it's kind of like an endless runner, except uh, in an abstract world. You're on a uh, a in raceway. A yeah, in a world where the. So let's just we'll just quickly play and give you a little bit of an idea what Thumper is. This is one that's going to make you nervous. So the idea is you have to do things as you're on this endless runner to as stay alive. Flesh eating right. beetle. Yeah, yeah, you are, aren't you? You're a beetle. So far, so good. I haven't had to do anything. Uh, oh, so, so things happen, and you have to. <laughs> you have to. I was you, early. Jump over that. I was or? early. I was early. Okay, ready? Three, yes. two, one. Tap. Late. Oh, oh man. Three, two. Nice. So this is a very heavy metal rock and roll kind of. They're just training me now. You won't always get this kind of coaching. It's too bad there's not like a vibration. Well, I don't know. Do the new iPads have vibration? Uh, not that I know of. I don't yeah, think this so. probably. You know, I think this actually might be better on a phone. This might is more of a phone. Uh, I think a lot of those size, uh, maybe. Yeah, a lot of those running games are really more for phones. But I'm showing it on here just so you can you can see it. Three, two, one, jump. Three, two, one, jump. Anyway, you get the idea. It's uh, <clears throat> I find these games very extremely visual, very... annoying. It's gorgeous. Uh, I just I I'm terrible at them. I guess uh, the endless running games. I'll play them for a while and really enjoy them, and then it gets hard, and I just say no. I keep dying. I don't like it. 
Yeah, I don't like having to start over from square one. Yeah. I think. Of all it's the games. Of all the games. And that's a good one too, Thumper. We've we've talked about it before. Um, oh, a rhythm violence game is rhythm and violence it. together at last. Also <laughs> another one like uh like uh the uh, Gardens Within that's available on a lot of platforms. Oh, and, and they you have can collections. Buy the space beetle pin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this has been around for a little while, Thumper. I showed it, uh, I think, when it first came out. Apple 2019 Design Award winner. My favorite, though, is Elo, of all of those. I don't know about you, but I really thought that was the game. Oh, yeah. I've actually uh, sent that one to myself so I can download it. I don't play a lot of games, but that one really interested me. It looks like a lot of fun. Let's take a break, and then Micah is going to show me the ins and outs of iOS 13. The public beta is here. I am really excited. I'm going to unmount my uh, my <laughs> iPad from this sticky pad and put it. I'll, that sticky pad will make its return soon because I'm going to need it for my app cap. But I'm going to put it back into my uh, bridge keyboard because I think this. The, to me, the whole point of iOS 13 really is to make your iPad more like a laptop. So uh, computer. Let's, yeah. let's make it. Let's make it look like a laptop for our next segment. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you about where I make my home on the web. I believe I'm a firm believer. In the, in the World Wide Web, the open web, and that everyone should have their own website. And so the next question really is very simple. Where do I make that website? And in my opinion, there's no better place than WordPress.com. And I put my money where my mouth is. I've been on WordPress.com for 12 years, 13 almost now. Uh, and I started using WordPress when it first came out. Uh, it was self-hosted at the time, you know, and I was spending a lot of time tweaking it and fussing with it and keeping it up to date. And then WordPress.com came along and they said, hey, we'll host it. We'll keep it up to date. We'll do all the technical stuff. You focus on making a great site. And I thought, that's the way I want to do it. WordPress.com actually cost me less than my old self-hosted site. They've got all the site building tools you could ever need, thousands of themes. And what I love the best, 24-7 support from actual WordPress experts, people People who love WordPress as much as you do. WordPress.com was created to let anyone pursue whatever it is they love by launching a site that's free to start but can grow with you as you need to, all the way up to e-commerce. Uh, in fact, it's so powerful, a lot of publishing entities, including Fortune.com and Quartz, use WordPress.com for their content management system. It's that good. No two-week trials, no hidden fees, and most importantly, WordPress users own their content forever. That's not something you can say about Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or anywhere else. If, especially if you're a young person or a business. There's two people I want to focus on right now. If you're a young person and you don't have a website, then you're letting somebody else determine what people find when they Google you. You want to have your best foot forward, a site that shows your best stuff. You want WordPress.com and a website there. If you're a business, you don't have a website. What? That's like not having a phone. I mean, in modern day, even, uh, you know, when we're hiring a handyman or a plumber, uh, I want to look at their website, find out more about who they are. And it's a great way to build your clientele. The customer support team is awesome and there anytime you need them, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even on weekends. What else can I tell you? I, you know, I, millions of people use WordPress.com every day to turn their dreams into reality. You should too. It's WordPress now powers one third of all internet websites. One third. One third of... <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's complete and utter uh, amazement because uh, it's that good. And uh, it, it powers my site, leolaporte.com. Go to wordpress.com slash twit. You get 15% off any new plan purchase right now. That's a good deal, too. 15% off at wordpress.com slash twit. We love you, WordPress. Thank you. Wordpress.com slash twit. Uh, 12 years in, and I can promise you another 12 years. I'm, I'm, I'm WordPress for life, baby. Well, it's here. It's here. I'm so excited. iOS 13, actually, Mac OS Catalina also came out both ahead of time. They weren't scheduled to come out till July. I think that shows that Apple has the confidence that these are stable enough for you and me to use. If you go, if you are if you own an iPad, particularly an iPad Pro mm -hmm. uh, or a late model Mac uh, computer, go to beta.apple.com. You can enroll. In both cases, you'll have to download a little file. In the case of the 
uh, iOS devices, iPad and iPhone, you'll download a little profile, which you'll install. And then you'll go to update, and all of a sudden it'll say, hey, there's a new update for your iPad or your iPhone. <clears throat> I did not do it on my phone. I think my phone, I'm going to keep it in uh, non-beta state just because I want it to be reliable. And right. as you saw already, there's some apps that just don't work on iOS 13. So this is something you do on your extra iPad. Uh, I did it because I think we need to cover it. Uh, Micah, you did it a long time ago with, a, with I think, the somewhat less stable uh, developer version. Yeah, it's well, it's what's fascinating to me. The first beta is usually the one that gives you a lot of issues. Right. And I found that the first beta, uh, for iOS at least, was more stable than oh. the second beta. Oh, well, um, <laughs> there have been a lot more bugs in the second beta. Um that none have been showstoppers, which is nice. You know, I've not run into any big issues. And uh, all of the apps that I use are working. Some of them are a little buggy, depending. But I have not had any, like, simply won't launch apps, which is nice. Right. Um, but certainly, yeah, this this is something that I, you know, I always, every year, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then I end up doing it. Can't, can't help it. I got to do it. it. I got to do it. I got to try it. I got to know. Well, and for um, me, the most interesting thing was not just iOS 13, but iPad OS. iPad OS. And as somebody who loves my 12.9-inch iPad Pro, I mean, I really do love it. Uh, but I always felt like the hardware way exceeded the iOS capabilities. The iOS was mm -hmm. designed for the iPhone. So this is, this is to me, the, but the real reason for my upgrade and interest is I want my iPad to be more than just a big iPhone. And I think there's some right. really nice stuff in here. So let me show you uh, in, uh, right away one of the very first things, which is all of a sudden you, you'll notice immediately the icons are smaller and the density is higher. So mm -hmm. that is huge. We have 30, room for 30 icons or folders uh, per page. And the front page, this is really awesome. I have 24 icons on here. And I have a column on the left, still room for a column on the left, which holds what used to be um, my uh, notifications page, now is a column on the left. Now, you can turn that on or off. You don't have to do it that way. There's a, a little switch. In fact, if I go to edit that says keep on host screen. If I turn that off, then we go back. Let's see. Let me do it again. Oh, maybe I can't go back. You should be able to. I, I think you swipe it. A, well, but you did swipe it. Oh, I that. turned it off. Oh, Let's leave it. I wonder if it's buggy. It oh, be I buggy. have to say done. No. You well, did do that, though. Yeah. Might be buggy right now. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> Remember, you should be able to turn it on. Well, now it says it's off. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Turn it on and off to make that uh, go away if you don't like having it there. However, I like it. Now, there's something else to point out, which I didn't know, and you explained to me. And I'll go back into edit. You've still got in your Today View, you've got the same choices you had before. You've got widgets, uh, widgets you've installed, widgets you haven't yet installed. Of course, as you can see, there's a lot, far more that I haven't installed. I've been very careful about curating what widgets are in here. These are the things you... And you might want to even do this more now that this is on your front page. But you're able to pin some widgets. How many can you pin? Uh, I Looks have like not two. tried to reach the maximum. I think oh, two. Oh, it's only two. Yeah. Huh. So that, the idea there I think is great. And I thank you for showing me that. When you swipe all the way down on this left column, the p widgets you've pinned will always be there on your home screen. So I chose uh, calendar and weather. You're always going to have, and this is huge, date and time. That's always a part of it. So then you can, you know how I have my clock here so I can see see what time it is and it's hard to read. I can move my clock away. Unfortunately, yeah. and I'm hoping Apple will do this. I would move my clock away if as it does on Android, tapping the time would open the clock, but it doesn't do that, unfortunately. Uh tapping the widgets opens the appropriate, you know, uh application. App, yeah. But uh Apple just a little tip. This is what happens on Android on, in most cases on the launcher. If you tap the time or date, you open your either your uh, date, your clock, or your calendar. So I'm leaving the clock and calendar there. But I have to say, it's only a matter of time before I, I hide away my calendar and clock. Yeah, because you've got, yeah. you got it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Plus swipe up and you can see the rest of them. So they're, I think it's nice. They're hidden. You know, they don't take up uh, attention. It's not that the, the space is there anyway, but, but they don't take up attention. Uh, but you can but you can get to them very quickly. I think this is a very important improvement. 
uh, much better Agreed. use of the real estate. Now, that's not going to happen on uh, on uh, iPhone. That's an iPad OS feature. The one thing, though, I haven't gotten yet, <clears throat> you know, sophisticated about is the multitasking. So can you walk me through some of the yeah. things I can do here? Uh, so one of the things is that you probably know about slide over. That's where an app comes uh, over from the side. So while we've got to be in an app. Oh, well, um, let me, so let me, let me launch... be in an app first. Okay, so I'm in uh, OneNote. And actually, uh, Notepad would be a good one to be in. And then I can... Sl I can... Sl I can... Sl well, you should maybe be not OneNote. Uh, let's, uh, let's do an Apple app. How about... Uh, see, you see, I don't have a whole... <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's do... No, this is... Uh, yeah, Notes would be good. So let me open up Notes. And then, because we know that'll work. Gallery view, smarter search, shared folders. Okay, I like that. So now I slide. See, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> okay, uh, swipe up from the bottom okay. uh, so that you launch your, yeah, now, my now take, yeah, take one. Oh, I can put something, uh, let's put Safari. Oh, yeah, oh over there. there you go. So maybe because I now never that's had side anything by side. There. Yeah. That's side by side. So go ahead and grab oh, Top right or the top right, that little yeah, and then take it and then drop that. Now it's right a there. window, yes, which means I can drag it around. Unfortunately, yes, exactly. it snaps left or right, right? It's it not. it does either go left or right, um, but you can now use multiple apps in in slide over so that that way it's it's easy to get to the different ones that you use most regularly. Mm -hmm. So you can um, see this would be a really good example here. I'm writing a a, a kind of a blog post of. Uh, it's all the things on my Mac. And if I wanted to, I could use then uh, a Safari to open up the information and then copy the information from here. And you're going to you're gonna help me do that. From copy it. Can I just drag it? <clears throat> yeah. So don't, don't, yeah, there you go. So you don't have to go to the copy uh, option. You Look at that. Drag it. Look at that. Now, so this is a really nice way to do some research. I think that's really fantastic. Um, uh, and then go ahead and tap back onto the Safari thing okay. just so that, that that's kind of editing screen at the bottom goes or the editing bar at the bottom oh, goes yeah, away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to make okay. that go away. Okay. Go away. Go <laughs> away. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Now, see the bar at the bottom right that looks like the home indicator? Uh, swipe up on that. In Safari, the, the bar there. Oh. Yeah. And you should be able to swipe <gasps> up on that. What happened? And that's where you could have multiple... Uh, different slide over apps. So you can drag and drop uh, essentially like whenever you're, if you back out and you had say, say, uh, yeah, there you go. And you wanted to add, I don't know, music or messages or something else as, yeah. as a slide over option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. pick and drag one yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Like Put that. that here. Yeah. Whoa. And now, now when I slide, slide up, up, I've got you both can of them. You choose between those two. Yeah. What so the it's like what? multitasking. Yeah, multitasking oh, and slide over. <laughs> is really oh, wait a cotton picking minute. So that <laughs> now that is a really nice uh, feature. Let me see. I uh, Oh, good. A nice restart. Is that what that happened? I, did I respring yeah. it or did I reboot it? I think I just resprung it. Okay. So this is important. We want to show that too, that there'll, there'll be issues. Uh, Tap but, notes. Let's see if Notes still has all oh, of the... Oh, does it not have it? Yeah, good. Yay. And you can see both of them there. Yeah, um, yeah. You can also that very so, easily take... That is so um, cool. So I can switch the, back and forth like this. Can I have more than two in here? I believe you can have several. I'm not sure. I have not tested the limit of it, but I know you can have more than two for oh, sure. That's great. I have to always be yeah, careful. So, Let's put photos in here too. Right, yeah, depending on what you have. Yeah, I don't want to put you, my you know. messages. So there's a photo. So now I can I have three different things. So this is a very, I think this is a clever way of of uh, setting up kind of a multitasking system in uh, an iPad. That's really great. That's I'm very excited about that. Look and at that. if you ever want to take one of those full screen, I believe you like so tap on. Uh, now you know there's the bar at the top in the middle of that. Yeah. Um, you can take that and drag it to the middle of the screen, middle top of the screen, and you should be able to. Well, that didn't work. Uh, I have not tested this myself, but it says... Um, There's a way to get this to become... Easily make a slide over app full screen by dragging it to the top. Oh, maybe just that's, maybe just dragging it off the top, maybe. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, yeah, see? Something happened. Well, that's just a photo. I oh, think you're going to drop that into notes. Yeah. Why is it not letting you do that? 
dragging it to the maybe top. Maybe because I'm in notes. I don't know. Let's try a different one. Let's try Oh, it. maybe you can... <laughs> this is funny. While you're in that, that... There you go. There we go. You did it. And this is, go. I have to be honest, always been my problem with this technique is it's, it's a little finicky, a little hard to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, remember at WWDC when they were demonstrating some of these new gestures, the guy demonstrating them said, oops. Was having issues, uh, yeah. Oops, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I think maybe with practice it'll get easier. Absolutely. I hope so. Um, another, th another thing that makes it easy is, or that makes multitasking better is multiple windows from the same app. So kind of before, oh, if you wanted to say, yeah, oh, right. If you wanted to have two yeah. safaris and side by side, right. now you can do that. Um, which I think, I, I want to say there were some options for safari for sure before, but say you were doing... Um, Say you were doing uh, pages, you're working in pages, right. and you had you know sort of one document where you'd collected research and one document where you're trying to do sort of the final formatting for that. Well, that's what you can do with uh, this new multiple windows from the same app option is to be able to take and and have those right side by side. Another op or example that they give is if you were organizing your files, it's really there you go. It's really handy to be able. Look, you've got two got windows three. and a slide over. I've got yeah. three safaris open here. This is That's this is cool. really cool. All right, so yeah, th again, this is going to take a little practice. Can I get three? No, I see. I've just moved that into the. Uh... That's cool. This is going to take a little practice, but just just this by itself, the ability to run one app, multiple windows. Now the apps will have to support this, so that means it's not going to uh, work with every app it's working with some right now uh right. i don't know if i could oh, yeah. let's see if i can open a second new york times for instance that may actually no this is safari in both cases so uh, apple's apps will certainly do this out of the box and other apps yeah. maybe down the road okay very nice i really like that um what else can we do what else is new and uh thinking? let's see Should i so play with these new undo and uh redo gestures this is this is going to be interesting because I've, I've, never, I've never used these before. Um, let's create a new note. Um, you just tap and swipe for, for text. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, you okay. can. Uh, okay. Top right. Oh, wait. Go ahead and click. If let's, you want a new note. Here's a there new note. There yeah. you go. Okay. Beautiful. So I can. This is some text. Now, what do I do here? Tap and swipe to uh, select. Yep. No. To select. To select. That's actually huge. Because this is kind of what you would do with a mouse. And in the old yeah. days, you had to say select and you had to drag these handles. But now you could just do do that? No. Gee, it so that's the problem it, is that it kind of... Whoa. <laughs> oh, is some these text. Uh, <laughs> the problem <I'll> is <laughs> they're trying to support both. Oh, there you here go. Here we go. Double tap. Okay, so double tap with three fingers. Undo and swipe, swipe left, left with three fingers to undo. Swipe right. Pinch and spread to copy and paste. All right, let's try that. So uh, double tap. Okay, uh, let's. So what I did was I dragged that over here. That's awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. but let's say I don't want to do that. I I <laughs> swipe. What was it? Swipe right with three fingers. <laughs> Why isn't it working? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, three finger swipe to the left whoa. should be undo. Uh. Uh whoa okay I just did something I didn't want to do undo <laughs> undo undo so here's the problem oh, and the complaint that I have I undo it all the way back to the beginning <laughs> now how do I redo swipe to the right with three fingers oh look at there that there we go oh nice nice when you're trying to support the original uh selection text selection features and the new text selection features that's where these things get confusing yeah. And that's where you do run into the issue. Uh, you should be able to just tap on a piece of text and swipe to select. But sometimes that old select and, and copies, that that screen gets in the way. Because um, it's just supposed to be one tap and then right. swipe. It shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't have to double tap. Okay. Oh, there we go now. You know, this is an example of it's going to take a little practice to get kind of used to it. Um, Absolutely. But, you know. 
The another thing they have that I saw, I think it was um, Steve T S had tweeted about the multi-select gestures. So you can quickly select email messages, files, and folders by tapping with two fingers and dragging. So if you have like a say you have a list of emails that you don't, you know, you want to mark as red because you've gotten 30 emails from a newsletter. Right. In the mail app, you tap um the you tap with two fingers on the first one and then you just drag down and it selects the whole list of them very easily. So that will work with email messages, files, and folders for now. And I'm sure as more apps support these sort of more involved gestures, then you can do easier uh, multi-select. Nice. Of course, um, as you showed, it's easier to sort of move the cursor around however you yeah. want to. Yeah. Uh, and it's supposed to be good. They call it intelligent selection. So if you come across an address, a phone number, an it email is. address, it seems to and be some yeah, others, yeah. it's jumping to the just, word. And this is nice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That is better. Yeah. Yeah. You can double tap on, they call it, like I said, intelligent selection. So you can double tap to quickly select an address, a phone number, email address, et cetera, versus, you know, your regular text. So even if it's, you know, you've got your, your address line, which is on multiple lines, right. just a double tap on that could select the whole thing. Uh, so that's the text nice. editing Look updates. That. Yeah, there. that's really fantastic. Okay, what else? Uh, have you used the quick? Well, they call it Quick Path, um, but the Quick Quick Path keyboard, which is the swipe Quick Swipe keyboard, essentially. Have you used that at all? Uh, I use it on Android all the time, and I love it. So let's let's play with the let's play with that a little bit here. Um, I'll I'll create a new thing. So what I need to do is is uh, uh, oh, you probably have to disconnect from somehow. I have to disconnect this keyboard, and I don't really know how know how to. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So nice. if I type T H now, how does it start? You were you were doing it right. Yeah, you just start swiping. Yeah, Wait, it's not working. <laughs> not doing anything. That's that's maybe because I'm in paste. Um, oh, that that might be why. And it might be getting confused because you still have the keyboard. Well, there we go. Wow, this is very upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I love swipe, and if you've used the S W Y P E keyboard, which you can install, uh, they went out of business, but, or I don't know, they're not around anymore. But this is a really, I think, a great way to type. It's funny because Ken Koshenda, who was, in fact, we've had him on Triangulation. Megan interviewed him, and he was one of the original designers of the iPhone keyboard. He said we looked at that when we were designing the iPhone keyboard, and we decided no one wanted it, so we didn't put it in. So here it is, more than ten years later, and. Apparently, it's been a huge success on the Android side. Uh, maybe yeah, Apple so finally said, oh, okay, we should do it. Because I, I personally, I find it a much easier way to type. Less so, and maybe it's not on the iPad, because it's it, less so on the uh, It definitely iPad works on, on the, the iPhone. It does. Yeah, yeah I'm, okay. I'm using it there right now. Uh, just I was doing a test to now, make sure that it Isn't there also works. a new smaller keyboard? This is really going to push it. Uh, it's okay. called the, the floating keyboard. Yeah. So if you pinch to shrink the quick type keyboard. Oops, let me start again. Get back into typing. There's also, I can go here and select it. Oh, nice. And there it is. And this, yeah. this can so go almost like, uh, anywhere. like a little iPad, or I mean iPhone keyboard. Yeah. Now maybe now this does one that does have that. the swipe. Yeah. Yes, it does. It does. Huzzah. No, I don't, maybe that was uh, user error. So the idea is you it does the best it can to figure out why you did that, uh, what you were what you were going for. What's your word? You but were it, going but for. it but actually does a pretty uh, good job, and uh, I so this is cool. So I'm not sure I want a really tiny keyboard. On the other hand, if I'm swiping, let's see if it knows I, your name. Hi, Mike. Uh, a oh yeah, I think it. It's spelled oh, it with a K. Yeah. That's close. Well, that is how it's spelled. That's how it's. Spelled. Oh, it's how it's spelled. Okay. Yeah. It yep. knew. I didn't. This <laughs> exactly. is Leo saying hello to you. See, I'm getting some real confidence here because it's doing a great job. Auto corrects doing. This is great. This is going to be that a huge is really, improvement. I'm impressed. Yeah, and look, and you can put I that think, keyboard anywhere, which is really nice. I think another really thing that's nice. important to note about this is it's supporting English, simplified Chinese, Spanish, German, French, Italian, and Portuguese to start. All those languages are supported by the Quick Path keyboard, so I think that's pretty impressive that they've got that many languages with the the new Quick Path typing uh, to begin. And 
Um, something else with the keyboard, this is kind of a small feature, but I find it fascinating. Uh, dictation will automatically detect which language a user is speaking nice. now. So that will be chosen from the keyboard language. Let me try this. Let me see. Bonjour, Monsieur Micah. <laughs> okay. it, it, didn't, it didn't understand French, but I haven't installed French. However, look how fast it's dictating. And this is the new on-device dictation, right? I mean, this is super fast. Uh, and very accurate. So I'm very happy about that. You see how it's adjusting uh, as I go? Period. As it goes, yeah. yeah. It's getting context and doing a better job wow. of, of I, understanding. I have to say, I will be using this one a lot. Because to me, dictation is could, a lot easier than typing. I agree. When it works, I agree. Yeah. Uh, something I could totally see you using uh, is the new option for external drive support yeah. on so iOS, including it. server-wise. What? Yeah, SMB. SMB, which is the Windows uh, thing. I'll tell you what, let me just, I don't know what's going to happen. I've never done this before. <laughs> I am reaching now into my super secret backpack. Ooh. Pull out uh, something, I don't know what. A USB drive. Let's do it and, uh -huh. uh, and see, what, see what happens. I haven't tried this. I'm excited because yeah. I have not, I've done the, I've connected uh, to a local server over SMB. I have not plugged in a, a hard drive or. So or SMB USB. is, uh, is the traditional uh, windows networking technology. Apple's kind of abandoned its Apple file protocol. Um, but SMB is widely used in, in the world. So that means you could see a network drive. How do I just out of curiosity, how do I see a network drive? Well, uh, go to you files? go to, Go into the Files app. Yeah, that's where you'll start. And then uh, at the bottom, you choose Browse. Okay. And then um, in low... Let me see. I can't see the... More, loca that more sure. locations, yeah, maybe. So tap... No, you go ahead and you tap... Click Done there. Okay. Um, and then tap the three dots in the top right next to Browse. So oh. three dots and then you choose Connect, connect to Server. Connect to Server. Holy cow. Now, I don't da, 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 happen da. to have an SMB server publicly available on this network, but that is really cool. Yes. Now, I'm going to try plugging in a... Now, for one thing, the one issue, though, right away is I don't have... I have to find a Type-C connector. Oh, USB Type-C adapter this is, or something? This is going to take a while because I do have it all, but I just have to go through my <laughs> my, <laughs> my entire bag to find all the connections I need here. But I do have an adapter. Let's see. I think I have an adapter here. Yeah, I do. Okay. So there's oh, a Type-C adapter. Oh, I love adapter. Yeah. Aren't these great, the grids? Yes. Yeah. Grid it. Um, so let's pick. I don't know if this will be readable because uh, it's probably some file format that Apple doesn't know about. But let's just try. So I'm going to now. Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. I've not done this yet. Plug a thumb drive, which in the past it would just go, I don't know what that is. It may still do that because who knows what the file format is on here. Um, what would I see? Linux data. Linux data. It did. It popped right up. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, Look sweet mystery that. of life. I have found you. <laughs> so that, that, is, that, is pretty, uh, that is pretty impressive. That is. Uh, and this is, by the way, this is not a uh, Mac file format disk. This is a Linux formatted USB key. So that's... That's wild. Yeah. That's wild, man. Let's try it. I got to do I got to do another another one. I just, yeah. Wow. You have like a I have a lot of them. And uh, and all kinds <laughs> of and all the all the different file formats. I don't even know what this is going to be. Arch ISO. Yeah. It's an, so look at that. Look at that. Okay, this is So normally, uh what I would do, I guess I could do it if I had a a, a card reader, I could take photos off my camera heck yeah oh, man okay now get ready look at the spoils tell of me war john when i can desk. plug it in <laughs> i got a memory card i got a uh, audio i got a yeah i know the desk is full of crap now and this is ah yes do you have enough do you have enough slack oh boy i hear noise so let's plug it in i'll, I'll unplug the headphone jack we're getting a little buzz from there Okay, so yeah, look at that. Oh, like a, now, what's cool? This is this this is raw, so I am opening it up. And one thing that they said, and I don't know, maybe uh, uh, Lightroom has not yet been updated for that. 
One thing that they did say is that you'd be able to uh, import directly into Lightroom. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if, uh, uh, well, I can open it, right? I'm opening it. Mm -hmm. I can save the image right there, okay? Should be uh, like, uh... Uh, Lightroom, you know, let me l launch Lightroom. Maybe Lightroom has to say, oh, you're running iOS 13. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I could just import this. Well, Pixelmator Photo can directly import. Yeah, and so now it's not seeing Lightroom. Choose camera roll. Yeah, that, there might be an option for files or something. Uh -huh. mm. Wait a minute. No, that's something, that's something else. So, yeah, I bet you this has just not been updated uh, quite yet. But the fact that I can just plug it in like this, uh, load in RAW, I guess I could do that with the Apple camera adapter. So that's not something new. But any, uh, I can even, well, you don't want to go crazy. Let's go. Should we go crazy? Can, oh my goodness! He's going to put two crazy. in there. I got two. Oh boy! No, it doesn't. Oh, like. that's that's because it's a it's because it's a uh, it's I, I think it's weird. ZFS. It's some weird file format. Let me let me use a different. Uh, let me use it. <laughs> One of your thirty USB. I got many drives USB got drives here. Let's just see. And they're and they're really basically it's the stuff I found in the parking lot. So I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, good. No Gotta kidding, kidding. Uh, done. So that's reading it right off the thing. Yeah, some of these are probably kind of funky. Let's do the one I read before because I know that works. This is yeah. really exciting. This is really exciting. So now, now your, SP, your uh, SD isn't showing up over there. Oh, yeah. Maybe I Did have something to, come unplugged? Or? Yeah, maybe I have to replug. Or maybe I just broke it. <laughs> 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 Maybe I just pushed it a little too, too hard. Oh, well. Anyway, we 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 demonstrated the uh, the the fact that this does now read uh, USB drives, which is pretty darn exciting. Any other features you think people are going to be very excited about with? Uh, uh, um, I think it's kind of a nerd feature, but people are super excited about having a download manager in Safari. Um, so and and you... and desktop Safari, huge. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh huge. yeah. Okay. I was like, what do you mean? Yes. So now it used to be kind of annoying. You'd go to different sites on your iPad, and they would always lock you into that uh, bad, in my opinion, view on such a big yeah. screen yeah. of a mobile version of the site. Now it is going to show you the desktop version of the site for the iPad's large display. It's great. It, it, it's nice to be able to just go to a site and have full control. And I tested this on some things that, uh, some sites that insisted in the past, no matter what I tried to do to try to trick it, it would insist on showing me the mobile site. And I was able to get the full true site uh, in, in this new version of iOS. And I'm very happy about it. Uh, you know, the big one for me is Google Drive, which we use all the time on all of our shows and has historically not worked well uh, with Safari Mobile. Um, and it works, as far as I can tell, beautifully. Uh, now, by the way, <laughs> I can never figure this out. How do I get rid of this second thing? I can yep, you did it. Just like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. And actually, I think that's a little bit changed in iOS 13. I think it was a little bit harder in it, iOS 12. It was so. really hard. I could I could yeah, never get rid I of always, it. <laughs> I didn't ever want to use Split View because I was worried I couldn't get rid of the second one. Um, so let's just open the Mac Break Weekly Rundown. This is a Google Sheet. Historically not worked very well in Safari. Uh, I, think this is, I think this is really going to be... A big improvement. I can zoom now. Oh yeah, this is this is this is desktop Safari. This works as well as it does on your Mac. Yes, One other you. thing that's brand new that's I think going to be interesting. Find my, hmm. <laughs> just my, no find my find, find so, my anything. Find my, apparently anything. So <laughs> this is this is pretty awesome. I can I can uh, I can see you know share my location. I can see all my devices. Um, I can see where my Apple Watch is. It's right here. Look at that. Hey, it's on my hand. Wow. Look at that. But I can even see friends because they've combined uh, Find My Friends. I could play a sound out of my watch. Oh, man. Yep, it is. Just missed that. Uh, I could get directions to my watch. 
<laughs> so, What's new in maps? So going through maps, if I just go around the corner, there's my watch. That's pretty oh, good. That's pretty cool. This I is, do like it. This a is lot, fine, you know? my and it's it's just everything. Uh, you know, my MacBook Air is uh, at home. My iPhone 10 is here. I mean, this is this is fantastic. Um, there's been some there've been some uh, some rumors that potentially uh, Apple could introduce more Find My options in the future. So they've talked about Apple possibly doing something like um, a, a, you know, chip that you could include uh, in your wallet or something like that, that you could then find your wallet if it got lost. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I do like this sort of combination of all these features. Um, I wasn't a huge Find My... <laughs> blank, uh, find my friends user in the past. And it wasn't until, um, my partner uses it all the time. And so I started using it and it's really handy. Like if you go on a road trip or something like that, and you just want to let people who care about, you know, Hey, I didn't go into a ditch and I'm still like on the highway awesome. somewhere. Yeah. They, yeah. They can check in and see that you're a okay. Uh, I like it for that. So it's Any also awesome. There are nice. Cause if I want to know, uh, if my son is at work, I could just tap Henry Laporte and find out, oh, yeah, he's at work. <laughs> oh, good. Isn't that awesome? And what that else is awesome about this is those location features, I continue, I, I guarantee you that we'll continue to see integrations between those specific location features and the home uh, automation stuff and home kit. So you could have it set up oh, to where yeah, yeah, when yeah. a certain person gets home, then this happens provided that nobody is home right now yeah. or provided that this, this, and this, yeah. that's going to be really neat because there already are some of those location features built in, like when the first person arrives, then turn on the lights, etc. All right. Let me sh push all this stuff out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's iOS 13. And uh, I have to say, uh, you saw a few things that happened. We had a resprung with a springboard reloaded. Uh, asphalt does not run. Um, so th that's something to consider if you're going to put it on a main device. On the other hand, if you have an iPad Pro, you may say just, I don't care because I have to have those features now. I mean, just, just some of these features... Uh, for photography, for me, this is a revolution. I'm going to be s thrilled, thrilled. And my question for you, Leo. Yeah. Dark mode. Are you an always run dark mode kind of person well, or are you a scheduled dark let's mode go, person? Let's go look at that. So uh, uh -huh. that is also in uh, Catalina has been for a while. We should look at the um, the, the new settings in here because some of these are, are a little bit oh, different. Oh, yeah. There are lots of fun new yeah. settings. Uh, anything in particular? Where's dark mode? Is probably in display. Display and brightness. Yeah. yeah. So... There's three choices. I can. I actually. I haven't yet tried dark. Maybe I'll do dark from for a while and see. But there's also automatic, which is cool. At night, it's in the dark mode. Uh, in the daytime, it's in the light mode, as you can see. And you can get to choose sunrise to sunset, or custom schedule, or whatever you want. I think I'm just gonna go dark. Let's just let's just That's see. What I... Let's just see. And the night shift is still on here. Uh, what will happen, of course, you'll notice immediately with dark mode is while Apple apps support it, that other apps may not yet support it. And so let's see if Moleskine Flow supports it. This is a pretty new app. It's a design award winner, but no. But actually, that makes sense. It shouldn't, right? Because your paper is white. It shouldn't all yeah. of a sudden. And plus, you can, you can choose a dark paper in yeah. that app yeah. anyway. So. so I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, Safari, what does it look like in dark mode? It's got a dark bar on the top. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, if you... Go to, um, oh goodness, go to, see, well, if you want to, Clock's you can go always been dark mode. <laughs> how about, right. How about uh, we can do calendar? How about, let's do, let's do yeah, calendar. Yeah, calendar's a good choice. Calendar. This is the Apple calendar. Oh, ah. it's so dark. It's darker than dark. It's the darkest dark. <laughs> None more dark. None more darker. That's pretty dark. Wow. It is. I don't yeah. know if I'm a dark mode fan or not. Uh, as you can see, I, I use I, kind of a dark uh, wallpaper, so maybe I am. Maybe I am. You do. <gasps> maybe I. Oh, dark mode. You see, even in the darkness, Micah Sargent even is still a light in the darkness. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> dark mode here. We'll have lots more, I'm sure, uh, in future iOS today's about iOS 13. Uh, I have not put it on my iPhone. 
Maybe we could find somebody who is really brave to put it on their iPhone. We could see what's uh, different. But you could see already iPad OS is going to make a big difference to how people I think use so. their iPads. I think uh, we had lots of questions in news, but we, we kind of broke the show a little bit to talk about this. It just came out. Let's take a break and do our app caps next. You ready? Ready. Get your hat in order. First a word from Aftershocks. I love these. I have them all the time. Actually, mine are plugged in at home. I keep them always on the charger so that I'm ready. Although, I have to say, Aftershocks have great battery life. Six hours of continuous music or calls. And then uh, they charge in an hour and a half, so I really don't need to keep them on the charger. It's just that that's, that way I know where they are because I have family members who like to borrow my Aftershocks. This is <laughs> the best headphones ever. They're different, though. Watch. When I put them on, what happens? They don't go into your ear they go around your ear and they rest on your cheekbones. These use a patented bone conduction technology. Now, maybe you've tried the old in the 70s. These were, remember you'd hang around your neck, the bone phone? This is not your grandpa's <laughs> bone conduction technology. This sounds better than having them in your ears. In fact, aftershocks come with earplugs you can put in and it improves the bass. It sounds so good. The bass is phenomenal. The sound is great. Because this has a lightweight titanium wraparound headband, I never have to worry about shaking my headphones loose. And uh, it's so comfortable you could wear it all day. In fact, I usually I, I wear them for every conference call. Yeah, it has a microphone in it too. It sounds really great. Crystal clear phone calls. It's also great for music. So I just leave them on all day because I often I just forget I'm wearing it. They're so comfortable. I just <gasps> love these. I need these. Oh, Micah, you don't have a pair? No, we're gonna have to get one them. for you because this you will love this. And I just read a study that said it actually is bad for you to use AirPods and other uh, in-ear buds that don't seal your ear because then people turn them too loud and they actually are deafening themselves. This oh, doesn't no. have that problem. Much more comfortable than any in-ear uh, headphones, including AirPods. And they're completely wireless. Bluetooth 4.1 multi-point pairing. I have them paired to all my devices. They're IP55 certified, so they repel sweat, dust, rain. They're, if you run or bicycle out yes. in the world, you know you have to hear traffic, oncoming traffic. It's dangerous not to be able to hear what's going on around you. These are great. They don't occlude your hearing. They're, run they're not in your ear. They're over your ear, so you can hear everything that's going on. You're never at risk. And they, they don't fall off. You could... You could shake your head like a crazy person. I just, I wear them all the time. When we go out biking, uh, this is the perfect headphone for it. We've got a special deal on a bundle for you. This is the Aftershocks Tech Bundle. You get the Trex Air. I'm wearing those right now. A pop socket for your phone. A large portable storage case. A portable power bank so you never run out of juice. And an Aftershocks Travel Tumbler that's an insulator as well. And all of that $50 off when you go to iostoday.aftershocks.com. Code iOS today. iOS today. Aftershocks.com. For $50 off the tech bundle, use the offer code iOS today. And I'm sorry that offer is valid in the U.S. only. Rules being rules. But uh, <laughs> even if you're not in the U.S., please use the uh, URL iOS today. Aftershocks.com because we love Aftershocks. Uh, <gasps> and they come in green. Oh, you're going to love them. Oh, man. Well, I, I love green. This is the green. I'm wearing the green, I think. So it's kind of like a. Like kind of more like a moss green, like forest a, green. Like yeah, forest, like beautiful. Oof. Oh, I love this. Is so light. These are these weigh nothing, but the sound quality is phenomenal. I just love them. After I'm, I'm a complete believer. Aftershocks, A F T E R S H O K Z or K Z. If you go to iOS today. Aftershocks.com, you will see how wonderful they are. And Micah, I'm gonna get you some just because I like you. All right. All right, I I'll hold like you to that. You. You're gonna. Oh, I'm telling you, you're gonna love them, but you gotta watch out. People steal them. Oh boy, yeah. I, my, I gotta watch my. I gotta watch Henry and Mizzy. Those yeah, dogs. They those like dogs. To steal my tech, you know, so. Chihuahuas love headphones. <laughs> they do. They do. Now you can register Chihuahua dot headphone. <laughs> I better hop on that. Hop on that right it. now. Now it's time. I've been waiting for this. For days, maybe even longer, for our app caps. Put them on. <laughs> what does yours say, Acapulco? Oh, my hat says vacay all day, Leo. <laughs> 
vacay all day. All, all day. Uh, hit us with your <laughs> your vacay all day app cap, will you, Micah? <laughs> yes, I would love to, Leo. Oh, so, go right uh, ahead there, Micah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, so some of y'all like to share. Oh, by, uh, by the way, I do like your hat as well. Thank you. A Mine is nice a hat wizard's hat. hat. I'll tell you the story in a little bit. All right. Abracadabra, as they say. It's so tall, uh, it doesn't fit in the... There. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> um, so... There are podcasts and people like podcasts. I've heard of and them. People <laughs> you have one. You have one called Somehow I Manage. I do. I do. And, you know, the thing about certain podcasts is you're listening to them and there are fun things that happen in those podcasts and you want to share it with people. And Overcast is a podcast app. We and all it love. Recently, we all yes, love. Yes, folks love to download and use. It's fantastic. Yep. And uh, it recently came out with a feature that lets you take a clip from a show and share it You know, to a social media service or wherever you want to in a message, what have you. Um, but other podcast apps have not jumped on board with their own clip sharing feature just yet, or some of them may have, some of them don't. How about we don't have the app itself do it? How about we use a completely separate app to take care of the clipping and sharing? So no matter oh, what app you're using. Hallelujah. Yeah, because that's one of the reasons or, I switched to uh, uh, Overcast, but it doesn't do video. Right. Yeah. Yes. And so. This is where Bullet comes in handy. Bullet is an app that doesn't have much app going on in and of itself because it is a share extension. Oh. It's not meant to be used oh, as an app clever. itself. Clever. Oh, clever. Oh, my. It is so clever. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, so with this app... I have always which, relied upon the hats of strangers. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, With this app, no matter where you're listening, you know, some people listen to podcasts in Spotify. Some people listen in, like I said, the podcast app. Right. Um, now, of course, if you're using iOS 13, things it's are a little, little more different, confusing. but it might still be here if I have yeah. um, maybe not. Uh, mm. Tap done, um, and then go up to the top where you've got those app tiles. Yeah, and then swipe to the right. Oh, it'll know. be here under more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna have to add it to your share sheet, and as yes. you can see, I have a lot of apps that I add to the share sheet. But there it is, bullet app. Bullet app. Extracting. Now, what it will do? What's is it doing? It will. Well, it's it's you're using it in the wrong spot. So you have to be listening to a podcast. Oh, there's no point at this point. App. I see. Yes, exactly. I see. So I've turned it on, but from now on, if I'm listening to a podcast, so sh maybe I should do that. Let's let's yeah yeah let's go to uh, where I don't. My, <laughs> there's no keyboard for my it. Keyboard is wait a minute. I have to I have to turn my keyboard off. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Okay, now. The, a little tiny, little, little tiny keyboard. Hello, little tiny Overcast. keyboard. Overcast. There we go. Oh, well, that was a lot of work. Oh, I don't need it for Overcast, but we'll use Overcast right. for the time. Yeah, well, just for this time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to be playing the world's most listened to podcasts. This is the daily. And let's say I'm like halfway through. And I'm listening. And then, oh wow, I really love that part. I want to share that with all of my followers on so Twitter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share link. Share link. Okay. And then, I'm going swipe to swipe over, over and, and I will have bullet. Oh, I have to do it again now because I should have done it when. I, yeah, I should have done it when I was uh, doing this. Okay. Now. Now bullet is gonna go ahead and get the whole audio file. Oh my gosh. And then you get to choose what parts you want. And you can see there's a little duration setting, 15 seconds right now. Yeah. You can change that to, you know, 30. Um, I, I think it goes up to 60 at this point. Um, and then, yeah, you'll set the start and the end. That, oh, this um, is so cool. That bar down at the bottom with the, with the dot is how you can sort of easily swipe through um, the podcast to where you want to go. Yeah. And then, and then uh, create. from there. And now create, I've created a bullet. Here's what's awesome. It uses a transcription service to create a video no. that has the audio playing out via stop. text. Let me stop this right now because it's still... Oh, boy. Uh, uh, let me just stop the podcast because... Okay. Oh, is it still playing? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's creating the bullet. So this is going to make not a uh, audio clip, but a video clip. Yeah. With... The text. With, with text. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Get ready. 
This is this is really remarkable. Now, is this going to cost? Oh my goodness! <laughs> now, that's why the the clip is sixty seconds at the most. Um, yeah, because I, don't I have know. to do that in real time. Is it is it is free? I don't have to pay it, for each it, transcription. Yeah, and I'm curious if it's using Apple's built-in transcription, uh, maybe, or if yeah. it's sending. If it is, then good. Um, because that means that I don't have to worry about it suddenly costing a trillion dollars. Um, but it could be in the future. That so a lot of times people share on uh, Facebook and mm -hmm. the problem with sharing audio on Facebook is nobody's going to, nobody's <laughs> listening to the audio. Yeah. Everybody's got audio turned off. Nobody wants to auto play audio. So this was something that, uh, was in, you know, people invented some time ago as a way of getting you to watch uh, putting text in and this is fantastic so you'll know what we're, we're sh I'm sh the clip i'm sharing that is great i love that yeah that you can is tap share really at the great. bottom and then you can yeah. share it wherever you choose yeah. to uh the one the one complaint that i have oh and it saves your bullets too which is nice so you can always go back and find oh, I them can share it again yeah yeah so the only complaint i have and i hope that it's something that will be able to be changed in the future it's that the transcription can't be edited um and yeah because there's some on, errors in here this exactly. Is, I don't think he said Austin Ian than Muslim organ Arab. I, yeah, I doubt that's what he said. Uh, <laughs> so actually, I'm really now I'm really curious. Can you turn up the uh, let's turn up the sound and see what it is that they. Austin Ian than Muslim organ Arab. I mean, I think that's what she said. Who knew? Like that's Muslim or, organ said. Arab. So there you go. Yeah, so uh, it will be nice <laughs> if in good. the future the feature that we get added is uh, an ability to edit the transcription. But if you don't use Overcast, if you use another app, if you want to share and you want to make sure also that it's accessible to more people, then this is a fantastic app. Right now it's free. Um, I think that it's kind of the the fact that there's exposure for the app there at the end, as you can see at the end of the yeah, video clip. It's shows link. bullet That's app. Fine, yeah. uh, so check that out if you want to share podcasts with friends in what I've come to believe is one of the best ways to do so, sharing new podcasts with friends. is just sharing little segments from them. They're yeah. easily retweetable and, and shareable to others and kind of gives people a hint. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Bullet. Yeah, and this is a step beyond what Marco did uh, in Overcast, too. I really, I'm really liking this. This is really nice. All right, I've been waiting to share this game three oh, now long the hat makes sense. years. So this hat my mom made, this is a wizard's hat. Um, I'll bend it so it, <laughs> if it, if it's on the screen. Now I don't know what I look like. A strange mushroom. I don't know. But, it's more uh, witchy now. It's, it's more witchy. It's than a little witchy. More but, yeah. but I have to tell you, uh, I am very proud to be in the Harry Potter Brotherhood. Wizards Unite came out on Thursday, the day before. Uh, you could show the game. The day before, instead of my silly hat, the day before uh, some the a summer solstice in the, the northern hemisphere here, they've been playing it in the southern hemisphere in Australia and New Zealand as beta testers for some time. If you remember how Pokemon Go took the world by storm in July 2016, stand back. This is also from Niantic. Niantic, when it designed Pokemon Go, based its design on a game called Ingress that it had been using really geeky game but it gave them uh points of interest all over the world and then those points of interest were applied to a pokemon go now they're being applied to uh the map uh, of your world instead of pokey stops and uh, pokey gyms pokemon gyms we have three new objects in the world now i'm here at twit so i can't see a whole lot of stuff there's an inn there I can't get into it. It's too far away. Oh, unfair. You've got so many things around you right now. I know. This is Okay, that's one complaint. If you're in a rural area, this isn't a great game. It's really designed for people who uh, live in... We're in suburbs. There's greenhouses. Greenhouses let you grow new ingredients for your potions. This is so much more, I think, than... Uh, you, you've been playing it, right? Oh, yeah. So yep. much more, I think, than Pokemon Go. And certainly, if you are, as I am, a fan of of the Harry Potter books and movies, you will really enjoy it. The entire mm -hmm. canon is in here. There is a lot of gameplay. So I'm I'm going to start by describing, uh, you create a ministry ID. This is me. You will choose, as we suspected, a house. But 
it doesn't matter what you choose. So, <laughs> and you can change it at will anytime. So I'm currently a Hufflepuff. If one day I feel more like a Ravenclaw, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, it doesn't yet, although I suspect in time it might have something to do uh, with the gameplay. You also choose a name. You can choose your nickname, and that's infinitely changeable. Or not, rather, your nickname is not changeable, but your name is infinitely changeable. And it's confidential. So this is kind of silly. In fact, when you share this with friends, nobody will see any of this. They'll only see a few little items. But it's fun because it's your ministry ID. So you can take a picture of yourself. And by the way, there's some really great Snapchat-y Snapchat like features to this. Shall I make a new <laughs> picture like, oh, of myself? Oh, you already have a wizard hat. I already have What's a hat on? on. I will give myself some wizarding glasses. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And if I want, I can even uh, give myself a little wizardy outfit. So uh, it doesn't really hang on my collar very well. How about just a little scarf? A nice scarf, yeah. To go with my <laughs> Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Once you take the picture, you can also put additional frames. You can say to the world you're a Hufflepuff. You could put yourself in the Daily Prophet newspaper. Uh, and as you unlock things, you get more and more uh, stuff that you can you can put in there. Actually, maybe I have a pile oh, of cauldrons. Kinda neat. That kind of yeah. works. You can also add uh, stickers. There's lots of them from the game. And a lot of you are going to recognize... Uh, you know, little bits and pieces of the movie and the book. It's really, I mean, I think I'm a prefect. Shouldn't I be a prefect? Let's take my prefect yeah. badge and put it right down here. So they'll nice. know. And they'll know I now. think we need a little color cast. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's put a little something uh, on here. Like a little, maybe I could make it a sepia or a black and white. But I always like to give it a little magical aura. Oh, yeah. how nice. So now, I didn't know you could do a magical aura. Oh, well, you've got to play the game more. You have to unlock that. <laughs> you can share this on social media. I guess the idea is they didn't want, probably didn't want people, so this I can share if I wish, but they didn't want people to, because even though I've done this to my you know, ID, the ID, when you have friends, they don't see your picture or anything. You also get to choose your wand. Again, completely meaningless, but but it has all of the all of the different... I wish that was more... I wish there was more meaning to that there one. Will, you of, know, I feel like there will be. I feel I like there right. will be. Um, there's also achievements, and there's quite a few of these, but none of this really affects the gameplay. There's also stats. You see, I've caught 342 magical creatures. I've walked 25 kilometers. By the way, that's what's great about these games. You can't just sit at home and play them. You need to get out, walk around, see people. Uh, uh, you will see other people playing this game just as you did with Pokemon Go. Uh, I've been to 293 inns and greenhouses. Holy moly. Oh, I've been playing hard. We, we'll play a little bit. I'll show you a little bit more. This is my suitcase. And if you remember um, the magical Thank you. creature. you. I do have a magical Oh, aura, you the way. look Just very good. There. I like that. Works with your hat very nicely. Yeah. Vacay <laughs> all the time, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> uh, so there are a few elements in here that I think are, uh, are, are good to know about. Uh, the vault is where you store your potions. You can make these as well as use them. Uh, I'm going to recommend that you make a few because you'll need them. Uh, healing potion when you get into battle. Um, the ex extimulo potion helps you fight better. The dawdle draught keeps bad guys from running away from you. But this is the one you're going to want the most of. Barufio's brain elixir. I'll, I'll do that right now because it's going to double my experience points uh, uh, for 30 minutes. And that's very important to leveling up. So now I'm on... Barufios. This is ingredients, which you'll find wandering around. You'll pick them up. I thought I saw a couple of ingredients outside. I'll pick them up in a second. You run out of space in this very quickly, so you can buy more space. I don't recommend it. What you'll find is a lot of these ingredients, you know, I don't need 26 pieces of lovage, so I'm just going to throw those out. So you'll find you can, you can with the standard amount uh, room applied you can do fine the one thing you are going to want to buy more of these are dark detectors which are basically like lures they attract the dark elements rune stones are important for battling in the fortresses and finally seeds and water when you go into a greenhouse you'll use these to grow more ingredients the rare ingredient that i always try to grow is the leaping toadstool spore 
because you need that to make Barufio's brain elixir. Of course, it wouldn't be a freemium game if you couldn't buy this crap. And there's a lot of stuff to buy. Try not to fall prey to this. You could play this game just fine without it. If you are going to buy things, the one thing I would buy, everybody seems to agree, is more spell energy capacity. You start with, a, with only 75 uh, spell energies uh, that you can store up. You see, I've bought a lot. I want as much as possible because what happens is you run out of spell energy. The only place to get spell energy is when you're visiting an inn. And those aren't always, you know, that's when you're out and about. If you're at home and you want to catch stuff, you could choose Ooh. your profession. Profession does matter somewhat. There's Auror. That's Harry Potter's an Auror. Hagrid's a magic zoologist. And uh, all the professors, including Dumbledore, are professors. And as you evolve your character, there is a skill tree. People who play uh, D and D games and so forth will, you know, World of Warcraft will recognize these skill trees, and it's really uh, important that you beef them up. Unfortunately, though, once you pick a profession and beef up that tree, it doesn't go with you. So you can rotate through professions, and I guess as people play longer, they may choose to have all three available. When you're battling, it's nice to have a mix, but there isn't a significant difference. So don't. Don't agonize over which profession uh, you are. You can make your own potions, as I mentioned. In fact, I've I've got some completed here. I like the potion making. I do too. The master notes part. Well, that's my to... favorite part. I'll show you yeah. right now. So I'm going to add a potion. I have some ingredients. Um, I don't have the ingredients, as you can see, for Barufio's brain elixir. I need more of those toadstools. But let's brew a strong invigoration draft, draft a, uh, a dawdle draft. That'll be handy. And then once you're brewing these, you can queue them up. You can even rent an extra cauldron after you get to a certain level. Ah, that costs money. That Don't rent a cauldron unless you've got money. In fact, I'm again going to say you can play this game without spending any money, and, and, and I think it's worth a worthy thing to do. But you mentioned the master notes. You can speed up the brewing if you know the proper incantation. Now, I don't happen to know the incantation. It's a, it's a sequence of gestures like up... Right, pinch, zoom, triple tap, clockwise stir, counterclockwise stir. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> mm, shake is another one. Uh, yeah, it's probably shake. No, oh, it was shake. But I shaked, I shaked too long. Oh, well. Wait, why is it doing that? Because it's yeah. double shaking. Oh. Anyway, uh, shake is a bad one to start with. But you see, I you agree. have to get them all right in sequence. And then it will speed it up by 15%. That's kind of fun. Uh, in other words, they're really trying to get in here all of the different features of, of Harry Potter. But the wow. game mechanics really... By the way, see, there's some items, newt spleens. They're everywhere. You can, You've I don't got know. so many traces they're, next to you. Now, these are called traces. And they're different colors for different kinds of traces. There's animals. There's dark arts. Um, pick one. What color would you like me to... To fight do off. the what the one to the right of that dark blue Paul? The what's the one to the right of that? Yeah, this that one. one. So this is the mechanics. The main mechanics of the game is oh. these are called foundables. Uh, pixie confoundables are guarding this ball. You have to cast a spell, and you cast a spell by tracing a shape, and you get graded on speed and accuracy. So you want to do it fast, but you also Want to do it within the lines? Um, let me let me try my spell here. Shall we try it? Yeah. So that was pretty quick. That was wow, a good was spell. Really Arresto momentum. Now it, this is the equivalent of Pokemon battling. It won't always work. In this case, it did. The pixies got chased away, and I caught. I've I've referred. So this is a. I overpowered the confoundables. Those are the pixies, and I'm going to return this crystal ball to its rightful place you get points for this you get there's lots of points it's a very complicated point lots structure. Of different points yeah there's experience points now because i have a double experience points i'm going to get more experience points out of this that's how you level up oh i got a brain elixir bonus yeah nice. baby yeah so by the way you can speed up many of these animations just by tapping so don't don't feel like that's going to be painful that you have to go through that each time. So that's the main mechanics. Oh, now this is an important one. You see that with a thing coming off of it? That means I've got mm -hmm. a battle. I'm glad one showed up. I have to 
Oh, what? It's, oh, no, it's not a battle. It's just a high-level threat. So sometimes it'll be a battle. Sometimes it'll be a high-level threat. But I do want to get this one, and I want to do a good job of it. Yeah, see, that was a kind of crappy cast. These are actual spells from the books, which I think is pretty fun. Aloha Mora. It yeah. resisted me. I might have to apply a potion for this fight. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply a potion. Oh, man. So this is my potion uh, bin. I have a number of potions I can use. This is the dawdle draught. This will. This is an extimulo, ex, ex, ex stimulo, which will give me four strong casts. This is a little bit weaker one, only three casts. And this is the dawdle draught, which means it won't run away. But I'm going to just use the... Let's try the Extimulo. The strong Extimulo. That, notice it makes it a little easier. Boy, that was Ooh. terrible. Will it work? Oh. Okay, one more time and then we'll move on. But I hate to leave this guy just hanging. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are the ones that feel the worst. It's like, oh, I got to let him out of the... Yeah, he's like, there we go. Oh. Nice work. Release the ball. That's the confoundable. He's the foundable because you find them. And the Thestral is now going back to the Forbidden Forest where he belongs. And that was good, 340 points. Uh, so that's the main crux of it. You'll see these Ooh, fortresses, wonderful. too. Those are like pokey gyms. I can't get into this one. It's a little too far away. But when you go in there, you can fight. You can fight with other people. In fact, you want to make friends. It's really important uh, to make friends because... Those people, if they're right now, you want your friends to be near you that so they can go into fortresses with you. So, Micah, you're in Missouri. It's not going to help me that you're you're a friend of mine, but I don't care. I think down the road, remember one of the things Niantic has done with Pokemon Go is add new features. The friends became very important later in the game, so I wouldn't be surprised if these friends became very important. If you want to mm -hmm. add me as a friend. That's my friend code, 4023-5470-1387. You can have up to 200 friends. I only have 15 so far. And again, you want to, I think, at least for now, you want to make those friends be people who you might run into as you walk around town playing because those people will help you in these fortress battles. This is a much more complicated game than Pokemon Go. Uh, I agree. It's very similar in the sense that this is an actual map of our area. These are places around us the other thing that's a little different at&t stores have sponsored this and if you are if you go to a mall with an at&t store uh i noticed our local uh found uh the uh, uh outlet mall over here everybody else is a sponsor all the stores are <laughs> so that's good i guess because it means there's you go there and there's a lot of stuff there's inns there's greenhouses there's fortresses but they close when the store closes. Oh, so wow. So we went over to the mall, and we were having a great time because you could just play all day there. And then it, stuff starts to go dark, and it says it's closed. And that's because sponsors get to close. Since I guess the idea is the sponsor is that they'll get some business, right? So why nice. bother? Nice. I mean, it, during the hours. There's yeah. a lot more to playing this game. It's a very deep game. I am very happy with it. One of the things you want to make sure you do every day is check yes. in with your daily assignments. I didn't do that. So none of the things that I did today have applied. That's bad on me. You also, I presume this hasn't happened yet, will be getting special assignments. These achievements will also, as you complete them, uh, give you rewards they're very helpful. They're very helpful. And uh, you see, I am on another Ooh, assignment. You're moving along I'm on this one. I'm moving SLS along on this one. Yeah. This was also really a big part of Pokemon Go, was completing these uh, special assignments. So I think that that's going to be fun. It is a really fun game. If you go in around with a friend, Lisa and I play, uh, maybe someday you'll come out and we can play together. We'll go into the fortress and then we can attack bad guys i i would wanted to show you a battle but i don't i guess we're not i thought i might get a battle so this is only I like one those kind. two battles those are, are fun. fun yeah i fought against some centaurs and i can't remember something else one of these days we'll have a battle they're very challenging there's werewolves there's death eaters again it's all the characters from the harry potter games or not games uh movies and books so i think this really they've done a great job for fans of harry potter now 
they in the first month, I think, of uh, Pokemon Go made two hundred million dollars. It's estimated now they've only made twenty or thirty million dollars in this first weekend. So yeah. it may not be as popular as Pokemon Go. Maybe not. Uh, I think it deserves to be. I think they've done a really great it, job. There's so it. much more I feel to do. That's yeah. the thing that kind of got me bored with Pokemon Go was that I just there wasn't a lot to do. And by the time they started to add more, I was already kind of done with it anyway. Right. But with this, you know, we started off as like the potion brewing for some reason really clicked with me. I really liked that. And uh, those battles are really fun. They're fun. <laughs> to do against people. And we should so. mention, just like Pokemon Go, that this is an augmented reality game. So you can't have these battles... In real space, I am apparently now in uh, going to battle this guy on the table <laughs> in front of me. So uh, you could see, you know, that's kind of fun. But I'm gonna, let me exit out of this because I want to also show you one more feature. And for this, I think I'm going to turn on. Let me turn on uh, screen mirroring because I want you to be able to see this. And I'm going to be jumping around quite a bit <laughs> because this is one more feature. If you can. You'll put down that brain potion, that doubling potion. Can you see my game? Yeah, you can. You'll put down that doubling potion before you open port keys. This is something people who read the books are familiar with. A port key is an item, and I've been collecting them. So what you want to do is wow, collect a lot, lot of port keys, keys and then and you, you unlock them by using a... You find these portmanteaus around town, and then you unlock them by using a key. As you walk, these these you you generate these by walking two kilometers, five kilometers, like They're, the eggs and Pokemon. Just like Go. the eggs, and like the eggs, once you've walked that distance, you can use these. But unlike the eggs, using them is a lot of fun. Watch. So here, I'm going to use the port key. The first thing you do, and this this has to be done in augmented reality, is oh. find the boot. So I found the boot. That's the port key, and I'm going to tap it, and that opens a world. <gasps> In the Wizarding World. It looks like nice. we are in a shop. Go ahead and show my screen because it'll look better. There you go. We're in a shop in Diagon Alley, and I'm looking for those glowing lights. Those are rack spurts. It's my job. I'm the rack spurt exterminator to find five of these. And this makes you look like a complete idiot, especially if you wear this hat. <laughs> I was doing this the other day in a restaurant, and people thought... Now, did you do it with iPad or with iPhone? It doesn't matter. You look like a... Because you have to... <laughs> you really have to move around. As you can see, it's That's augmented true, reality. Yeah. You and you were really, in a restaurant? <laughs> you have to, and so I'm in a restaurant moving around like this, and my daughter's saying, Stop it, Dad. Stop it. <laughs> so uh, good news, I was able to... Whoa. And by the way, port keys tend to be the most experienced points of all. That's why you want to use the doubler before you do it. And uh, and I think within uh, a few port keys, I'm going to level up to level 15. This is a really, really fun game. Uh, I've been waiting for this. In fact, I said I can't play it till I get to level 40 on Pokemon Go. I did about a month ago. Dropped Pokemon Go like a hot potato. Nice. I am all in. All in. All on in on the world. potterage. Oh, look. Oh, look. Some more ingredients. Rune spore eggs. And I think you just completed a, a challenge. On of the course right side. I did. Of course or I did. They... Oh, this is something, by the way, that people don't like. They, the, uh, the Niantic folks treat you like cats with little laser dots all the time, driving you yeah, crazy. Those red dots. Those and sometimes red they dots. don't go away right away. Yeah, well, and a, oh. so yeah, I, I picked up an ingredient on the map, so I get some. That's lightning. That is the most scarce resource. You can't cast spells without lightning, and that's why you're going to want to go to a lot of inns. I wish I could show you the inn mechanic, because it's kind of fun. You get to choose a food. Um, this is really, really a fun game. I haven't shown you all of it. It's, there's a lot more, and that, I guess, is the point. It's a, a deep game you'll enjoy. It gets you out and about walking around harry potter wizards unite it's free to play you can download it now on ios and android as you can see i'm really pleased the ipad version is not a ex expanded iphone version it actually is designed to use the ipad even though it's using it in portrait mode but hey i guess they had to do it that way um really done a great job i think niantic gets a lot of credit and i if you played pokemon go in the first few months you remember the servers crashed all the time Niantic has learned their lesson, and I have found this one to be extremely reliable. Oh, that's one other feature I should mention. Um, you, really important. Go into the settings. There are th different settings. I turned off the music. That's kind of mind bad because you probably want to hear that great Harry Potter music. And yes, they're using the real music and vibration, but eventually you'll turn that off. 
There's one other feature, though, you're really going to want to turn on. Download all the assets. If you have 3.3 gigabytes free on your phone or pad, and I know you may not, but if you do and you download the assets, that means you don't have to get those assets from the network. That'll save you bandwidth on your phone, but it also, I think, uh, lower the network uh, demand and makes it more reliable for everybody. So hmm. there are a few other things you might want to turn off or on. Uh, it is a battery hog, so that's why I've turned off a lot of uh, the features, including augmented reality, because that really uses it up. But boy, is this a is this a fun game? It is fun. I didn't get to play any of the music for you because I had that turned off, but it's got the Harry Potter music. I had to leave something for you to discover. Harry Potter Wizards Unite. It's time to save the world. No muggles allowed. <laughs> and that does it for iOS today for this day. Always a pleasure, Micah. Uh, hey, Micah, I've had had a good time. Micah Sargent is a, a podcaster. You can hear his incredible podcast, which is all about the best sitcom ever made, The Office. It's called Somehow I Manage. Search for the Somehow I Manage podcast. Each show is one episode of The Office. And they That's just true. did the dinner party. <gasps> <laughs> What an episode. <laughs> and, uh, of course, he's a regular on many of our shows. You'll also uh, find his work at chihuahua.coffee. That's Thank the spot. You, we do Thank iOS you, today, Lee. and we have a lot of questions we didn't get to today because there was so much to talk about. We'll get to those next week. I, I appreciate all your emails. Send them along to Megan at twit.tv. If you've got a question, a comment, a suggestion, Megan at twit.tv. If you want to watch the show, we do it live Tuesday mornings around about 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Uh, that would be eh, roughly 1600 UTC. You can watch or listen live at twit.tv slash live. If you're doing that, chat with us at irc.twit.tv. And, of course, you can get on-demand versions of our shows. That's why it's a podcast, audio and video, wherever you uh, find your favorite podcasts or even on our website, twit.tv slash iOS. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you next time. Megan will be back next week on iOS Today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.